Marco. Marco. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, you stupid fucking asshole. Yeehaw, it's bull wrangling time. Let's go. Come on, Marco, fuck him. Yes, yes. We are back. Holy schmokes. We are back in such a big way, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys for being here once again. This is the live stream on Always Marco YouTube channel. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Glad you guys are here. Good to see you. Hope your guys' lives are going well. Your weekend is going well. Let me start by saying this. Obviously, thumbs up the stream. Thumbs up the team. Because it costs you nothing. And secondly, you're very lucky you got a stream tonight. Because I was this close to not streaming. And I'll tell you why. It is because it is such a nice, beautiful day here on the commune where we all live as a cult together. And I was walking along the grounds of the commune just about an hour ago before, you know, before I came home. I mean, in, before I went into the big house to do this. You see the big house, the background, I'm in the lounge. And it was such a nice day outside. I was walking around barefoot in the grass and I thought, you know what, maybe I'll just enjoy this and I won't even stream. The goons will just have to wait for their weekly dose of propaganda until next week. But I thought we should pay some bills. We should engage with the cult so that they stay loyal. And, you know, I should make sure everyone is doing their bit. And I'll tell you, I'm so happy. I'm so happy what I saw. Um, on the on the on the out in the fields today when I was walking around just for a short while I saw I saw many of you out there picking berries collecting sticks examining rocks you know maintaining the mud huts and the straw huts it was so beautiful I thought wow this is so beautiful extremely important cult work is going on here and uh, wow so proud to be your cult leader and keep it up of course keep it up and in case you didn't know in case you're new to this channel because 25,500 of you are <laughs> no big deal um upcoming at the end of this month uh the 21st i believe it's the 21st let me look at the calendar here yeah so you i mean maybe i'll do it on the 20th because the 21st is a monday but at the end of this month it will be the four year anniversary of me being on YouTube. I started my YouTube channel in 2019 was when I posted my first video. It was, um, let me think actually. Yeah, it was August of 2019 that I did my first ever live stream. And so we will be doing a sort of celebration. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it on this channel or my second channel, which is called Always Marco Extras, but I will also be doing some streams on Always Marco Extras on random days, uh, which will not be about multi-level marketing. It will just be you know personal stories from my life, and sometimes I'll have guests on. And for those of you who don't know, that's what I used to do primarily on YouTube. Anti-MLM content started out as sort of a side thing on, on my channel. I was mostly doing just like uh, music and, and silly stuff with my friends. So uh, yeah, if you wanna check that out, Check that out. Yes, it's GoonCon. You're correct. It is GoonCon Volume 4. And, uh, of course, that is when the annual goon taxes are due. You guys got to pay your goon tax at the Streamlabs link in the chat. Um, and, uh, you know, pay your tithe. You know, you go to church, you put $2 in the, in the little offering plate. When you come to the stream, put $200, $500, $1,000, whatever you, whatever you got laying around in the couch cushion, you know. So we love to see that. And there's a, I love to see that there's 136 watching, but I don't love to see that only half of you have clicked like. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. So, actual litigants this is bad. This is really, really bad. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marco in our forum, the Goon Court. You do not want to end up in Goon Court. I'm telling you, if you hear that music and your name has been called... <laughs> please, please, please move carefully. Move very carefully. What is up to all the members that are here? Thank you guys for your support. If you guys want to uh, become a member, there's the button down there that you can do it. You can also gift memberships 
to other members of the cult. Such a beautiful thing. And if you donate, I'm going to be, I don't have the alerts popping up on the screen because I'm sorry to tell you, baby, 86.6K subscribers, the, the alerts just be popping up too much. I can't be having the alert and the text to speech pop up every time someone drops $1. It's like, it was too interfering with the stream. And so I got, I got a, you know, a few comments asking me to, to, to dead that, so we did. But I will still be keeping an eye on it. And it looks like we have some bag already. We got a donation from, what's today? August 5th, from Papa. Thank you, Papa. A cheeky bag for Senpai, they say. Thank you, Papa, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, means a lot. Appreciate it, appreciate it, appreciate it. Good stuff. Okay, and what else? Another one on Super Chat. Would you say Sensi is an MLM? It is an MLM, yes. My mom has tried to recruit me to sell for many years. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry that your mom is in it. And uh, yeah, it is an MLM, and thank you for the support, and I really hope your mom wakes up out of that. Uh, I see the name David Poole in the chat. I just want to let you know, David, that I know that you are on my Patreon and I saw your message. I know you messaged me on Instagram and you messaged me on Patreon. I haven't got a chance to respond to you yet, but I will respond to you. And yes, we will do the call, the video call. Uh, so if you want to get video calls like David, holla at me on Patreon or memberships. Um, also, this Losing Fortunes Radio t-shirt you can get on alwaysmarcomerch.com. I'll put the link in the chat. If, you've, if you're new to the channel and you've gone back and you've watched some VODs of the old streams, you know that there has been a running beef for a few years now between me and two gentlemen named Scott Johnson and Peter Mingles. And those are the voices you hear when you hear things like, Marco, let's go, etc. Do you like me? <laughs> so they are two older gentlemen in their 60s who have a show called Building Fortunes Radio, I call it Losing Fortunes Radio, where for the first half of this year almost, every week's episode was dedicated just to talking shit about me. And so we made quite the uh, bit of you know reacting to it. I, I haven't checked in with them in over a month now, so I don't know if they've been talking about me, but that is what this shirt is a reference to. And I thought it was appropriate to wear it for tonight's stream where we'll be, we will be uh, you know, re reacting to the video of another anti-MLM detractor. So I thought it was appropriate. Uh, too many comments, man. I'm sorry. What up? Appreciate you guys. Appreciate all the kind words. Uh, as you can see, I'm very much alive. I'm in good spirits. I'm doing well. I believe that the end of next month, uh, will I, I will have good news for you. That's what I believe. So we hopefully we will see. But I appreciate you guys sticking with me till then. And very, 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 very good news. The time's gonna fly by. I'm gonna be streaming and I'm dropping a new video on Monday. But if you're a member of my Patreon or you're a member on YouTube, you will be seeing the video tomorrow. And the video, I'll tell you what it is right now. The video is, um, a lot of you guys have been requesting this from me and so I finally finally listened to your request. Been meaning to get to it and uh, you know, for the first half of this year, I was focused on a very big project. And now that I am not working on that project, I, I can finally uh, oblige this request that many of you have had, which is to cut the streams down into more concise, digestible videos without all of the, you know, talking to the chat and donos and whatever, like, like, like the big YouTubers do. So I am dropping a video on Monday, which is the condensed version of my stream from about a month ago where I talked about the presidents, the former presidents who have promoted multi-level marketing or supported and endorsed multi-level marketing. I edited that, I think it was two and a half hours or two hours, I edited that stream down. It's now less than 14 minutes long. It is so tight and concise and I added some more stuff, some more edits, pop-ups, things to make it more engaging. And I think it's a really, really good video. You know. When I combine the post editing that I did with the live editing that I do, because you know I do this stuff and I have the black and white and I have the um, you know sound effects and stuff that I do live. So the live edits take away a lot of the work. So after I record the stream, I have basically two hours of raw footage that I can just cut down. Really excited to drop it. It's it's uh it's very funny. And if you haven't seen that stream, you can go watch that stream. But this video will basically serve as a greatest hits 
of, uh, of that stream, the best moments of that stream. And I intend to do that for more videos. Thank you, Atlas K, for joining the cult. We appreciate you. You will be getting to see that new video uh, ahead of everyone tomorrow. So very much appreciated. Uh, okay, let me see. Pay my goon tax. I want to uh, also, I, if you're not in my Discord, join the Discord. I'll put the link in the chat. The, there was a couple of goon birthdays. So happy birthday if it is your birthday. I know that it is uh, European Cutie's birthday. I think she changed her username on here to Monica. So happy birthday to you, Monica. What up, Julie Anderson? Hope to see you on the replay. And also it is... Uh, uh, it is um, it is Devin's birthday, so happy birthday to you, Devin. And thank you, guys. Happy YouTubeversary. Glenn, what's up, Glenn? Appreciate you. Tube Sock, thank you for the <laughs> donation. I'm okay on the insurance offer. Um, what up, all the mods? Jared, Joseph, what's up, you guys? Okay. Kind of miss hating on Skeeter and Peter. They'll be back. They'll be back. Okay. You want the laugh? I got you. <laughs> I will. I will cut down the David E. Monetier spray technology video. All the all basically all the streams that I've done so far this year, I will try to cut down into a a video if they're good. Um, and. Uh, It'll hopefully be more manageable now that I'm not going to stream three times a week. I think it's a lot more manageable. If I can stream one new video, one new stream per week, and then go back and cut an old one down and release that per week, I think we'll be, uh, I think we'll be good. Sanjila also has a birthday. Happy birthday, Sanjila. See, I shouldn't have done this because now everybody's going to say it's their birthday. Um, <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you, Monica, for the donation. Thank you. Happy birthday. And everybody thumbs up the stream because let's be real. 187 people watching, but only 110 likes. The math is not mathing. Okay, let's get to it, y'all. Let's get to today's topic. Wrong button. Oh, here it is. Sorry. Sorry about this. Here we go. Okay, great. So we are going to hey, watch... This is Dale Calvert over the next couple oh, minutes. Oh, fucked it up. Here we go. All right. So today we are going to be watching a video by a gentleman named Dale Calvert. He is somebody who has been in the network marketing industry for a very long time. And he has a video on his channel that he uploads on quite frequently called, and he has a video called Truth Behind the Anti-MLM Movement. So very curious to see what our friend Dale has to say. Heads up, this I'm playing his video on 1.25 speed because it's 44 minutes long and he talks rather slowly. So let's just see what he has to say. I haven't seen this, but the only background that I have on Dale is that he has, he has made a couple of videos where he sort of rattles on about the same anti-MLM creators over and over again. And so I'm going to see what his beef is and what his stance is. Hopefully, we can uh, get some value from this video. And who knows, maybe in the future, Dale can come on the show and we can have a, a productive conversation. Justin, thank you. Can I have Sanjila's Sanjila number? Ask her. Also, actually, no. Because this is a this is an official cult rule. Goons are not allowed to date each other. I, as the cult leader, have to stay true to what cult leaders do, and I have to have control over every every aspect of every cult member's life, as you know, and that includes romantic relationships. So unless I sanction it, unless I say you are gonna date you, you cannot do it. Assume that everybody is mine, romantically, men and women. It's just, it's just a power and control thing. Assume everyone belongs to me. But I thank you for donating and asking. That is the way to do it, Justin. So thank you for asking, but the answer is no. So <laughs> what's up, you guys? Okay. Hey, Marco, I got a great opportunity for you. Thank you. Oh, Jesus, appreciate you. Dave Vaughn, what up? 
boo on only one stream a week. Hey, I'm sorry. Yes, dating not allowed amongst goons. Come to the cult in a relationship or married. That's true. Yes. Jared is a great example. You see he's a mod in the chat. That is a, that is a very real thing. Meredith, Jared's wife, was uh, initially in the cult. She recruited Jared into the cult. This is a true story. She used to watch my streams, and he was not a member of this cult. She recruited him. They became cult members together, who I watched over, and, you know, I, we did the blood ceremony in the field at night and whatever on the full moon. And uh, now they have a baby. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. And look, he has a wrench, and they're both high, upstanding members of the cult. So beautiful. So beautiful. Um... Yes. So that's good. Silicon Valley. See, she says arranged and assigned partnerships only. So true. It's so, so true. Um, what's up, Sandy? He played with shooting his shot. When do we serve the Kool-Aid? I honestly really want to do an in-person goon meetup where we have like Kool-Aid and burgers, but we'll call them nothing burgers as a reference to uh, the uh, Building Fortunes Radio diss. So yeah. Meredith, she, she's got a wrench too. Isn't that so beautiful? Amazing. Mommy and daddy in a cute culty. It's so cute. Literally so romantic and so cute. Okay, <laughs> back to Dale Calvert. Let's watch Truth Behind the Anti-MLM Movement. I hope Dale sees this because he, uh, he uploads quite frequently on his channel called Dale Calvert. So let's check it out. Hey, this is Dale Calvert. Over the next couple of minutes, I just want to have a factual conversation about what's going on behind the anti-MLM movement that we're seeing. And it really is sincerely a movement. Uh, I'm getting more and more questions. I'm having more and more conversations. I just had a conversation with a young lady today that's been involved in the profession for four years. She's frustrated, looking to make a change. And, you know, not sure if, if network marketing is what she wants to do now, even though she understands that it is the best option to be able to provide her not just time and not just money, but both time and money, uh, the best, the best opportunity in the world for average people with above average desire. And she's really starting to question whether this is for her or not. And just in speaking with her, I had absolutely, uh, no doubt that she had the communication skills and the ability to, to become a very good leader in this profession if, if she got the right training and she was with the right company at the right time in history. Okay, so first of all, also LOL that he's using a literal PowerPoint. I love that he made a PowerPoint for his YouTube video. I, I respect that. Um, so first of all, obviously his statement about multi-level marketing, network marketing, whatever you want to call it, being the greatest opportunity in terms of money-making capability and time freedom is completely factually untrue, categorically untrue and disprovable from, from any measurable metric, disprovable from any angle and has provenly been not true, ha has been proven and has been proven not true, it's just not true. Multi-level marketing is the worst business opportunity from every measurable angle. Every measurable thing, when it, when it comes to the number of victims, the amount of money people spend on average, the amount of time people waste in it, the, uh, the, the loss rates among, among uh, participants, so this is completely unsubstantiated. And of course, Dale backs up his claim with the big if. The big if. And what is the big if? If you are ready, coachable, it's the right company, the right upline, the right point in history, all of these arbitrary, vague ifs that of course are what they use to You know, this is what every MLM uh, person I've ever seen uses to try to argue back against critics of multi-level marketing. They say, well, they just didn't have the right upline. They just didn't have the right XYZ. They just didn't try hard enough. And it's, of course, complete nonsense. And it's, it's, 
it's unfalsifiable and unverifiable. That's why they use excuses like this, because how can you prove that you weren't in the wrong team? Thank, oh, thank you, Janet Miller, for the memberships. I appreciate that. How can you prove that you weren't in the wrong team? You only were in your team. So there's no way. It's like a, you know, it's impossible to argue against because it's just a, a nonsense, made up, arbitrary thing. Uh, thumbs up the stream, by the way, guys. Only Almost 100 of you have not clicked like, and that's very concerning. Janet gifted five memberships to Joey, Silica Valley, Walter Turner, It's CC. And that's amazing. Thank you. Is that, that one, two? And, and Alexis. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Okay. If someone creates a PowerPoint, it's hard to disprove it. Dave Vaughn says, the best average people with above average desires. Not words I want to hear from Dale, especially when talking about a young lady. Let's see. Everyone drink when he says right time in history if you want to overdose. And then the other thing, too, is him saying the right time in history. I'm not exaggerating when I say this. I have sat through hundreds of hours of MLM opportunity presentations from different companies, both in person and online. And literally every single presentation I have ever watched, this is not an exaggeration, this is not hyperbole, every single one of them makes sure to include some little blurb about how now is the greatest time in history to join network marketing or to become part of the company. Give me one second here. I've got to turn off something. I've got to adjust something here. Here we go. Okay. Thank you so much, Cat the Barber, for the gifted memberships as well. Five gifted memberships. Codeine and Sprite, Jolie, Hanso, Len Lens, Melody, and Misha were gifted memberships. We'd love to see it. What up, Specs? Joey K, quote, I can fly when nobody is looking. Exactly. It's exactly like saying, I can fly when nobody is looking. Or did you know that when you turn around, plants are talking behind your back? But you just would never know because every time you turn your head, they stop talking. Like in Toy Story, the toys, they all go limp. How can you argue with someone arguing fantastical fairy tale nonsense. Well, you can't. And that's exactly the whole purpose of this type of argument, in my opinion. A lot of people are going to watch this new video early tomorrow on Patreon and memberships. I'd love to see that. Thank you. All right, let's continue. Oh, yes. What was I saying? Yes. They all say that now is the time. Now is the best time for this kind of opportunity. They said this during COVID. They said this during the 2008 recession. They said this when the internet became a thing. They were saying this back in the 70s. Literally every presentation I've ever watched from every person in any company that I've ever watched has said, now is the time. Now is the time. It's always the time. It's like how uh, prosperity preachers are always saying, the end is nigh. Jesus' return is imminent. It's like, I'm, okay, okay. All right. All right, let's continue. And, she, and the, her main problem is she's had terrible uplines and she's, and she's been simply in the wrong company at the wrong time in history. But again, let's look at just, you know, we go down through YouTube and it's just full of people griping, complaining. Most of them can't keep their thumb out of their mouth talking about how they were a victim and some network marketing company messed them over. Now, I want to make it very clear that I have a real love-hate relationship with network marketing. I love the profession. I'm beyond disturbed by what it's become. And again, you just you, you, you look at this and you think, what in the world is going on? What is this all about? And, you know, people calling out everybody and anybody and calling out the profession and it's just unbelievable to me uh, what we see people doing uh, and, and how they're griping and complaining about a profession that has really changed the lives of so, so many people. But it's, it's all over. It's everywhere that you look. It's nonstop. And, you know, a lot of people are saying, you know, I told my, uh, my team to, fake, to post fake pictures and give fake testimonies, and I, and I did this that was wrong and that that was wrong. Well, guys, that's on you. 
that's on you. You know, well, my leader told me to. Well, what did your mom? My mom told me if, if somebody told you to jump off a bridge, would you jump off a bridge? I mean, it's crazy. And, and again, I'm not saying that there's not a lot of predatory leaders in this profession. There are. But there are a ton of people that really are trying to the very best of their ability to support and to help people. And, you know, to, to you know, some people deserve to be called out. And, and so I'm with you for that. But how you do it and the way you do it, you know, it's either going to provide value or it's not. And again, people complaining about Lulu Row, which there's grounds for that without question. Uh, Beach Body and so on and so forth. And the reality is most of these companies that people are talking about, they their biggest challenge, besides probably not having uh, proven systems for them to plug into and move forward, is their biggest challenge was they were simply in the wrong company at the wrong time in history. Okay, the next thing I wanna address here that Dale is saying is this idea of, well, yeah, you might have had an upline, who told you to do that unethical thing, but ultimately you're an adult, it's your choice, so that is your fault. This is another thing that I take issue with because Robert talks about this in Ponzionomics and I believe Steve Hassan talks about a similar concept in Freedom of Mind and Combating Cult Mind Control about how people who are in cults can't be said to have made a willing decision to do the things that they are doing or were doing during their time in the cult because they are being professionally manipulated. Their minds are being tampered with using brainwashing, undue influence. And when, and when people join multi-level marketing, they are joining because they are told they are going to get A. It's this opportunity that's going to make you a lot of money and get you time freedom, or at worst, it's going to be a side gig to earn you a couple hundred extra dollars a month. All of these things that are untrue, but by the time these people start to suffer the consequences, realizing that it's not true, and they're spending into it and spending into it and spending into it, they've forgotten all about what was promised to them and they're not even in the right frame of mind to push back and say, hey, you told me I was going to get all this stuff. I never got any of that. As a matter of fact, I'm spending and spending and spending and not getting anything. Why is that? Well, because by that point, they have gone so far down this rabbit hole, one breadcrumb at a time of positive, you know, prosperity thinking, mindset, manifestation, new age guru nonsense. They have been brainwashed into being like this beacon of toxic positivity who doesn't know how to, you know, who doesn't know their left hand from their right because their mind has been so professionally tampered with. So, you know, there's a lot of people who, and you know, the vast library of anti MLM content that Dale is pointing out here, where former reps from MLMs are talking about how they used to do this, you know, predatory tactic or whatever. When you watch these videos, these people are often like appalled with themselves. They think, what was I thinking? I can't believe that. It's not like they went, yeah, I really was all in on that at the time. I just have turned over a new leaf and I realized it was wrong. They didn't even recognize themselves. I think the fact that Dale can even pull up a vast library of videos like this where people are saying stuff like that is proof that these people weren't doing it intentionally. But of course, I, I think we'll, as we'll see here, Dale is going to assert that, you know, I'm just guessing here that as this video progresses, Dale is going to assert that these people are slandering MLM just so they can make money you know, and they have malicious intentions. It's not that they realized what it actually is and they're trying to help people. It's that they discovered a new grift off the backs of people who had had the wrong upline and the wrong company at the wrong <laughs> period in time or whatever he says. So let's continue here. Um, this is him on 1.25, not 1.5. Yeah, this is, what Dale is saying here is the same, this is the same I like MLM when it's done right nonsense that we've heard so many times from Scott Johnson and Peter Mingles on Losing Fortunes Radio. They talk about it like, 
well, you know, it could be a good thing if, and these ifs are the most impossible, uh, you know, non-existent unicorn standards. Robert talks about, Robert, in Ponzinomics, Robert talks about how this idea of a legitimate MLM is a unicorn. It doesn't exist. There's no record of one. The FTC can't name one. There's no regulatory investigation of an MLM company that revealed everything was all good and above board and, you know, the products were, you know, the revenue was mainly brought in from selling the products to end customers who weren't part of the opportunity themselves and there was no front loading and complete, it's a complete myth, this idea of legitimate MLM or MLM done right. That's actually why on the last stream I think I did, the thumbnail was a unicorn inside the pyramid because it doesn't exist. All right, uh, Silica says, that's the exact position my brother is in right now. So messed up how lost in the MLM sauce he has become. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Okay, here we go, let's continue. And thumbs up the stream too, guys, it's free to do. And it really does help, especially when we're live. All right. And you know, this person, it's like, how many of these videos do you need to do? How many of these videos do you need to do? And well, let's just look. Hey guys, long time no see. It's funny he says that because he literally has so many videos on his channel. He's constantly uploading. And uh, shout out to him. You know, he's making his PowerPoints. He's doing his thing. But so we go, and I think if I remember correctly, she was in It Works. And every video is basically how bad network marketing is, and so on and so forth. So if that's true, can't you say your piece one time and be done with it? So why do these people make multiple videos on this topic? It's, it's, it's because they know people, victims will flock to it. And, you know, I think this is the, the, the girl that sells anti-MLM t-shirts and hoodies and whatever. And they're just trying to, to make money. Yeah, here you go. Here's There it is, of course. They're just trying to make money. And also, what a completely stupid thing to say, in my opinion. Couldn't you just say MLM is bad once and be done with it? Well, couldn't I ask you the same question, Dale? Couldn't you just make one video saying MLM is good when it's the right leader and the right company in the right period in time? Or what, what do you say? Right period in history? Right moment in history? Couldn't you just say that once and be done with it? You know? Okay, hold on. I think I smell a donation here, and I need to check this. This looks big. This looks like big news. Fake news. Um, let me see here. Wow. Okay, hold on. Let's go in order. The Nerds Loft, $20, saying, All hail Marco. Thank you so much, The Nerds Loft. Snazzy, $3. Thank you for everything you do. Wish I could contribute more. Thank you, Snazzy. DV Huss, bro, my brother, thank you. We had a great conversation uh, on Instagram last week, and I'm so, so grateful for you and your help and your support. Man, he dropped $200 and said, Good to see you back, bro, doing what you are best at. Man. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Uh, David Poole, thank you for the dono. $10. He said, thank you for the update. I was trying my best to not sound stalkerish. Just happy to be able to support you. I figured the AC unit debacle would be a fun thing to talk about. Scott Johnson was mistaken. Thank you for defending me on my uh, air conditioning knowledge. Every... Every, I don't know if I can say that properly. Evie, Evie, thank you, Evie. She dropped $3 and said, love your Discord. You don't have to shout out on the stream. Just wanted to let you know, my sister is in Melaleuca and also a Jehovah's Witness. Sorry to hear that. This BS goes hand in hand. She separated herself from family slash identity. Dumb fucking products for real. Yes, sorry, so sorry to hear that. And not Marco uh, dropped $20 and said, my tithe can finally be on live. Goon tax paid. Thank you for that, not Marco. Uh, you know, the goon tax isn't really a solid number. It's, it's supposed to be, you know, the general guideline the goon accounting uh, department likes to see is that you tithe 80% of your income. I think that's reasonable. Your gross income, not after tax. So I think that's reasonable, you know? Think of, look at all the things around you in your home, in your apartment. You got that extra bedroom you're not using. Downsize, more bag to the cult. You know, you got that skateboard you don't go on anymore. Sell it. More bag for the cult. You got three kids. You don't need three kids. You know, let one of them 
assume the role of like a live-in nanny or something like that. Save money. Save money. Thank you for that, you guys. I really appreciate it. Okay, let's continue on here. Oh, one other thing I wanted to say was about this whole Dale, Dale Calver thing is these sort of unverifiable, unfalsifiable claims are something that prosperity preachers use all the time. You know, God told me. Well, how can you argue with that? Or God, Jesus is coming back. Okay, when? Well, he's, well <laughs> give me a thousand dollars, you'll find out. Just more nonsense, more nonsense that's used to dupe people. And somebody asked me recently if I would make a video talking about prosperity preachers, you know, like Joel Austin and what's the one guy's name? Kenneth something? Kenneth Copeland? Kenneth Copeland. And I thought, you know, And I'll say right here and now, I actually think that multi-level marketing is far worse than the scams of prosperity preachers who fly around on private jets, but then tell old ladies that they need to send them $100. And I'll tell you why. In order to be a successful prosperity preacher, there is a few criteria that you have to meet in order to successfully pull off the scam. For example, if you run one of these Christian megachurches, you are relying on your constituents first being Christian. Well, just that alone already loses you a large part of the population who maybe subscribes to another religion or is atheist or whatever else. With multi-level marketing, they do not care what your religion is, what your race is, what your beliefs are, none of that. Politics, nothing. They will take your money and they will take it gladly. And so because of that, I think multi-level marketing casts such a wide net. As a matter of fact, there's not one demographic of people that multi-level marketing claims to not be for. They, they say anyone can do it. You know, this is the key meme thing that these MLM scammers say. If I can do it, you can do it. It's insane. So, yeah, and I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a whole nother conversation. It could be a whole video, me comparing MLM versus uh, prosperity gospel nonsense, but that's, that's my opinion. That's my opinion. Okay, let's continue on here. 250 people watching. Thank you, guys. Thumbs up the stream and support the cult and, you know, help out your fellow cult, uh, cultists. All right, I'm reading your comments real quick. Can we get a Nikki verse? Can we get the $200 verse? Hilarious. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. We can sell the tax to other people for commission. That is true. Sell your goon tax. I just looked up that podcast. It's a blog talk radio, Scott and Peter. Why do people still use that? Everything on there is unlistenable. Yeah, this, actually, I got to shout out Dale for, I think he's probably in the same age range as Scott and Peter, but man, this guy actually like manages to make videos and like his audio is not that bad and like PowerPoints, like this guy's fucking killing it compared to Scott and Peter. So this is refreshing, honestly, way better than just audio. Okay. Gold caps on your teeth, sell them, tithe to the cult, exactly. Jesus is coming back, but you must pay for our mastermind course to meet him, of course. Sell my heirloom watch to give to the cult, of course. Still haven't read my DM about the Omega Pro Ponzi scheme and the reboot Go Global. Everyone who speaks on Eric Warrior's stage seems to be involved. Uh, what platform did you send me that on? Honestly, it's hard. Between Instagram, YouTube, Discord, uh, Patreon, it's, it's hard. So I apologize if maybe I, maybe I read it and then forgot to reply and then I never came back to it, but just message me like a period on whatever platform you message me. And so I get the notification back to the top and see it. Um, thank you, Jolie Hanso for that question. Thank you, precious 81. Appreciate you. Thank you for that, Dono. Raising awareness and combating these commercial cults. Thank you. Really appreciate that. You know, it's funny. I was thinking about this, and I'm going to maybe save this little blurb for, for another video in the future where I talk about... I'm going to do a video. It'll be a short video where I talk about what to do instead of MLM because I get this question from people who are actively in MLM, from people who are thinking about leaving, people who have just left, etc. Uh, and it's this sort of... 
question that comes after the doubt starts to set in in the person's mind or once it's fully set in. And they ask me, you make all these videos and do all these streams talking about how bad MLM is, showing all these different ways of how MLM is bad, showing all these different people involved in the industry, industry who use these various methods of you know, unethical persuasion to try to hawk this scam. Well, what do I do instead? And obviously, you know, the TLDR of this situation or of this answer is that, the, you know, it's tough. Multi-level marketing is bringing people in and luring people on very extravagant, very attractive promises, time freedom, financial freedom, get the car you want, the life you want, the house you want, the girl you want. My, my message, my, the, the truth is sort of a cold, hard truth, and it's not a sexy one. It is get a job. It is dedicate years of your life to honing some skill that is not easily duplicatable so that you can you know, charge for your expertise and your labor or whatever it is. If you want to, you know, in some cases, maybe you'll have to go to school if you wanna be a doctor or a lawyer and there's some sort of standards and practices in place that have to be satisfied in order for you to get a job in that field. This is not really a, a, a sexy, glamorous, you know, I get the appeal of why so many people get scammed, men or women. Everybody wants money. This sort of also goes hand in hand with the comparison I made to Prosperity Gospel. Prosperity Gospel, if, if it's a Christian megachurch, you have to be a Christian. MLM, they are selling you on what? Money. Everyone wants money, regardless of their religion, regardless of their race, regardless of their beliefs, politics, whatever. Everyone wants money, right? But the, the Christian megachurch relies on you being Christian, being in that geography, you know, that region so that you can come to their church. It's a physical location. You could send the money in online. But some people don't even believe in God. Some people, you know, they'll say, you want salvation? Send me $500. Well, what if you don't believe in God? Well, now it's completely valueless. But when you are promising people things that universally everyone wants, well, now you've broadened your horizons of who you can scam so much more. And I get that my answer is not sexy. And so... I think young men especially get frustrated when I tell them that the truth is that you need, to dedicate, you need to, for the next 10 years of your life, put your head down, work, pay off your debt, not have debt, steadily save money, even if it's just 10% of your income a month, start with that, pay off all your debts, keep building, exercise, go to the gym, eat healthy, don't chase girls. This is not the attractive message they want to hear. They've often just left an MLM where motherfuckers are watching Wolf of Wall Street every night at the, you know, to wind down after their you know, uh, big hype rally training session. And they all think that they're Jordan Belfort about to go venture off into some multi-million dollar bag. So I, I, I really do think, you know, it's funny, my friend from high school who tried to recruit me to World Financial Group, which was my first experience with multi-level marketing, really, there was actually one earlier now that I think about it where I was, uh, my dad's friend's wife tried to recruit me to Lioness when I was like 17 or 18. But when I was 19 and my friend tried to recruit me to World Financial Group and I went to that meeting, it was the same thing. They were promising wealth and prosperity and time freedom and I was thinking about this today, laughing just to myself about how all the promises that were made to me at that World Financial Group presentation kind of did come true or are coming true, but not because of World Financial Group. It's because me learning about World Financial Group and sent me down the rabbit hole of multi-level marketing where now I have a YouTube channel, which is my business, where I make money from being a YouTuber and I actually do have time freedom and, and I'm making money without having to work a horrible nine to five J-O-B as they would call it. And uh, sure enough, my friend from high school, I'm sure he's working a job now. He's not uh, in World Financial Group anymore. And I don't say that as a dig. There's nothing wrong with working a job. It's just ironic how that played out. And uh, I'm grateful for him because him recruiting, trying to recruit me to World Financial Group did lead to me impacting thousands of lives, but not in the way that they anticipated. It was from me doing this. So anyways, spoiler alert for whenever I do that video, but yeah, and thumbs up the ting.
Okay, let's see. Video ideas about what to do other than MLM. Anything. Infinite money glitch. Yeah. Get a paper route or sell your blood. You'll make more money. Literally ask someone to send you $1. You've made more money than MLM. Eat rocks, get a job, donate plasma, pretend to be a cow and eat grass. Exactly. Tube sock. Can you please learn? MLM is great. I have a universal life policy for you. Thank you. In Alberta, plasma nets you 200 a month if you donate twice a week. That's too much. That's too many donations for me to only get two bills a month. Eat healthy. David Shapiro, what up, David? Eat healthy, no drugs, exercise daily, meditate, no corn or hookups, self-education, reading, work hard, save money. It's not the sexy option. Exactly. It's not the sexy option, but the results can be sexy in the future. It's just that, you know, um, what's the saying about the, the – there's some old saying about the, uh, you know, young people especially – want things to happen like this. Young people are more likely to be one, the ones comparing themselves to their friends flexing on social media after high school about how successful they are. When in truth, everyone is lying. Everyone is broke. You know, motherfuckers go to, uh, you know, take pictures in front of a car that's not theirs, go on some trip that their parents paid for and act like they got it from, you know, it's a work trip. Just making it up. Everybody's making it up. You know, I ran into a guy at the gym this past week, and I went to high school with him. He was a year older than me, and I was happy to run into him because he said he's a teacher now, and he was asking me about speaking at his school that he teaches at, which I was like, you read my mind. I've been thinking about you know, doing public speaking for students so that when they go out into the real world after high school, they don't get into MLM. And I asked him, you know, it's been on my mind. I said, next year, next summer will be my 10-year high school reunion because I'm 27 years old, which is fucking insane. But I said, next year's my 10-year uh, reunion, and you graduated a year before me, so you just had yours. Did you go to it? He said, yes. And he verified sort of what I have suspected, which is like a couple people are married, a couple people had a glow up, but for the most part, bro, everybody that he thought was like crushing it is either not crushing it or uh, they're actually doing much worse. So, yeah, I'm interested. I, I wonder maybe next year, I'm sure I'll have over 100,000 subscribers. I, I wonder if I should even go to my high school reunion. I'm just, I have a morbid curiosity about it that makes me want to go. Not to like gloat or anything about how successful I am, but to go and sort of see if uh, what I'm saying is true because that anecdotal experience will be very valuable, I think, to students. If I do start speaking at high schools, I think me being able to go to students and say, look, you're in first year university, you are in 12th grade, you're about to graduate. Let me tell you, I just had my 10 year high school reunion. Everyone is still broke. I think that would be valuable to tell the kids, you know, um, everyone is still broke because they were partying and doing drugs and chasing, you know, uh, romantic relationships that ended up resulting in nothing. And they just blew a bunch of money on, you know, going out to eat and Starbucks and vacations and going to the movie theater and people were in multi-level marketing. And instead they could have been using that time, you know, going to the gym and becoming sexy and, uh, working and having a skill. And again, Boring. I can already see if I was in if I was in 12th grade and I had some guy came to my school and was like, oh, 10 years. Of blah. But, you know, I think I'm still young enough that I could relate and get the message across uh, effectively. But yeah. All right, let's see. Yeah, my ex-friend has not been in WFG for a long time. I wonder if he'll be at the high school reunion. Because that's how I knew him, is him and I went to high school together. Precious, congratulations, you ranked up. Yes, been a member for four months. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. It's more about helping people when you donate. The money is a bonus. So true. Everyone has credit card debt if they're flexing. So true. So true. You would not believe how many people after high school 
have credit card debt or they have a line of credit that is massively bloated because they went traveling, they went to go find themselves and they did a European tour and now they're paying it off. Plus they have student loan from some degree that they uh, changed their major after one year or two years and they never finished it and all those credits were for nothing and people are so fucked financially out here. It's crazy, bro. I think about some people's situations. The majority of people, the majority of people, this is the truth. The majority of people are not balling. The majority of people, I think I read a statistic that said uh, the majority of people in North America would not be able to afford a $400 emergency. Like if a $400 emergency came up, tire went flat, something wrong with the car, some medical thing that cost money, a $400 emergency is enough to spiral a household into uh, a financially, you know, uh, you know, uh, a financial predicament a vulnerable situation, $400. I mean, don't get me wrong. That, that's true. I think even just think about this. I'm going off topic. We'll get back to Dale in a second, but this is, I think this is valuable what I'm going to say. Provide massive value. Um, think about next time you're outside, think about just keep a mental note. When you're out on the street, just start, look at the clock, and then for the next five minutes, I just want you to keep a mental tally of every time you see a luxury vehicle, Mercedes, Audi, BMW. For five minutes, just count, and you'll see how many you get. Now, what's the average cost of one of those cars? $80,000, $100,000? How many people do you think actually have $100,000 laying around in their bank account to be able to afford a $100,000 car outright, cash? And that's me being generous, because if you have 100,000 to blow on a car, chances are you have way more than 100,000. You know, even if you had 200,000 in the bank with no debt, you wouldn't waste 50% of your entire net worth on a car. So really, how much money would you have to have to truly, truly afford a $100,000 car? A million dollars? Well, a million, if you, if you have a million dollars in the bank and you have no debt, Okay, and you spend 100,000 on the car, you just spent 10% of your entire worth on the car. Even that is probably not advisable. So the idea that, basically the point I'm trying to make is that virtually every luxury vehicle you see is just a, a big metal hunk of debt that that person is carrying to keep up with the Joneses and flex and impress somebody. If you, if you took, if you went and stopped and froze time and said to the guy driving the expensive Mercedes, hey, listen, right now, the world will end unless you pay off this car completely. If that guy made phone calls for the rest of the day and took the value of his house, the equity he has in his house, all the cash he has in the bank, the savings, called people and borrowed money, he would be very lucky if all of his assets to pay off that car even were broke even. Do you know what I mean? Like even if he got to a net zero, most people have a negative net worth because the car is debt, the house is debt, the credit card is debt, 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 debt. You know, if you ask someone right now to pay off, if they had to pay off all of their debt, they couldn't. So anywho, what the fuck was the point I'm even making on this? Everyone's broke. <laughs> That's the point. That is the point. So, um, yeah. Don't stop worrying about it, man. No one can oh, no one can afford it. No one can afford it. Everyone is lying. Everyone is lying. I'm reading your comments. Okay. All right. Let me let me continue on with uh, our boy Dale Calvert here. Here we go. Merch available. 
Okay, and all this is anti-MLM stuff. Okay. And I think this is hilarious. Because in my mind, in my mind, what she's doing here is is worse than what she ever experienced with any network marketing company. And then you got these wannabes jumping on the bandwagon so they can build up their audience and maybe make some money from YouTube. And it's just kind of comical if you kind of look behind the curtain and say, what are these people really doing? What is their objective really here? I, I mean, it's just kind of... This is complete madness. So by Dale's logic, selling t-shirts is just as bad, if not worse, than deceiving people into a multi-level marketing cult where 99% pe of people are predisposed to losing money, and that is the well-documented statistic of the loss rates in multi-level marketing among participants. How do you figure that? How do you figure that the option for people to willingly purchase a product that they know for sure they will be getting for the price that it is listed for. How, how is that in any way comparable to this mythical time freedom, financial freedom opportunity that in 99 point some percent of cases amounts to the exact opposite? Kind of fascinating, uh, this one. I told my team to use fake pictures. Well, that's on you. It's not on the company. It's not even on your upline. Obviously, if your upline told you to do that, you shouldn't have done it, but you didn't have to do it. That was your decision. That was your decision. So, again, I am not – I mean, some of these people have legitimate concerns, legitimate gripes, uh, and I'm not trying to downplay that at all. But probably, you know, before you listen to anything else I say, you should probably ask yourself, well, who the heck is this person? Why does he care? Uh, my name, again, is Del Calvert. <laughs> Amazing. He includes, wow, I should have seen it coming. I'm guessing, based on what I'm seeing right now, that this video is doubling as a pitch for whatever Dale is selling, whatever MLM company he is in, or whatever course he's selling. I found this website here. This is the Business for Home uh, website, and this is from 2015. But here's Dale, and it says, TLC changes partners with legendary MLM trainer Dale Calvert. First of all, the reason this stuck out to me is because I love how they refer to him as a legendary MLM trainer, Dale Calvert. Dale Calvert. Who? This sort of, I've talked about, I've talked about this phenomenon before, about how within the ecosystem of these MLM cults, there's all these guys who are worshipped as like celebrities and everyone is a legend of the industry and he's an OG of the industry. But out in the real world, who is it? Dale Calvert, MLM, legendary MLM educator, John Smith. <laughs> you know, John Smith is my character. <laughs> John Smith is the default character name that I made up to drive this point home is that all of these people within, you know, within the stadium that they have twice a year, you know, where they have their big event and all these people are worshiping them and they come out and it's like, John Smith, Ooh, ah! everyone's head is melting. It's like uh, the end of the Raiders of the Lost Ark where, you know, they open the Ark of the Covenant. Everyone's heads are just exploding and melting. Out in the real world, nobody knows these people. Who are they? Saying that you are a legend in the network marketing industry is literally less than nothing in the real world. Do you know who I am? Imagine the police pull you over. Do you know who I am? I'm legendary network marketer John Smith. Like, like they're Steve Jobs. So here we go. Dale is showing us his house. Who is this person and why should I listen to him? And what do we see? A car and a house. Dale started building teams at age 20 and retired at age 39 after earning over $10 million his last five years and helping over 200 people. Wow. Wow. So, of course, this is the appeal to authority fallacy. Who is this person? Why should I listen to him? Well, I have all of these amazing jaw-dropping metrics to my name, $10 million earned and retired at this age and helped this many people make this much money. And of course, it's completely unverifiable. How do I know? 
How do I know? There have been enough cases of pyramid schemes being shut down or pyramid scheme recruiters being, you know, charged with fraud and deception. Even in that Jay Nolan case with the, uh, even with that Jay Nolan case with success by design that happened earlier this year, they found out that this guy, Jay Nolan, who was making all these ridiculous wealth claims had like mountains of debt and had been lying the whole time. So, all right, all right. And it, it really saddens me to see this because I've watched the greatest opportunity in the history of the world to help average people with above average desire uh, just diminish into what it is today. And it's been very bothersome for me to watch this happen. Uh, I'm one of the success stories. You know, when I started in this profession, I was driving this beat up Chevy Chevette living in this little 600 square foot home. And, you know, a few years down the road, we were able to build our dream home, 17,000 square foot mansion on 100 acres in central Kentucky. And the thing that I'm absolutely the most proud of is, you know, my last, I actually retired at age 39 and made over $10 million my last five years after building the team. But we were featured on this magazine, Success Makers. You know, that is myself right here and with the red tie and the owner at the time. That's my yellow Viper, my blue Viper, the company limos, company plane. I mean, um, it was a great experience. It was a f phenomenal run. And, but the thing I'm the most proud of is this entire magazine was just full of people that we personally work with, train, and help them break out of the bondage they were in, working a full-time job or in their traditional businesses, and give them time and money. And I am one of the few people uh, on the planet that <laughs> knows what it feels like to have over 200 people on your personal team making five, six, and seven-figure incomes. So you can learn more about me than you would feels like to have over 200 and helping over 200 people on his team earn a hundred thousand dollar plus incomes. Another thing here that he's checking the box, you know, here Dale is checking yet another box of the typical cookie cutter MLM scammer pitch things that they always say, which is the bondage, the slavery of working a horrible J O B. I had somebody, I got a comment from somebody recently who had the audacity to call me out for making the slavery analogy when I'm talking about why MLM shouldn't be legal. And I say, well, just because something is legal doesn't mean it's ethical and doesn't mean that it shouldn't be legal. And I give the example often because I think it's the best example of how slavery was legal for hundreds of years. And now we look back and we can't fathom that humans would do that to each other. I had somebody try to call me out in my comments and say, you shouldn't be talking about slavery. You don't know about this. You and it's like, they were offended that I brought up the example of slavery when talking about the element of how things that are legal aren't always the good thing and vice versa. And the irony of them being offended that I would use that analogy, but yet in literally every single MLM pitch that I've ever watched, they say something to the effect of jobs are slavery. Jobs are synonymous with slavery, the bondage they were in. It's such a hyperbole and such a... over-exaggeration of what jobs are. How, how can you actually sit there, a grown adult with a straight face, and say that jobs are slavery? I'm pretty sure the, the biggest thing that made slavery slavery was the fact that they were literally enslaved meaning they didn't have a choice. You could quit your job. You could go get a different job. So even just on that point, it's complete nonsense. But of course, they want to fear monger to their constituents and make them think that everyone else out there is just a broke zombie with a horrible J-O-B that is keeping them. <laughs> everyone else is in the matrix but them, you know? It's insane. Literal insanity. I never get tired of it. I get exhausted, but I never get tired of it, you know? <sighs> you know? How, how, many, how many slaves in history got paid every two weeks for the amount of, that, and it correlated to the amount of hours they put in? You know, it's just a ridiculous fucking thing to say.
<laughs> um, what up, Susie? He hasn't retired. He's replaced his nine to five with another job with fewer boundaries around your time and relationships. So true. All right. Your people on your personal team making five, six and seven figure incomes. So you can learn more about me than you would ever know, want to know at dalecalvert.com. So I'm coming, I feel like from a, a place of experience and what I'm going to share it's not going to make the anti-MLM people uh, happy. It's not going to make the network marketers happy, but it needs to be said. It absolutely just needs to be said. And honestly, I'm doing it just to clear my head a little bit because I've had so many conversations recently. Yeah. How many slaves got full-time? Another great point. How many slaves got full-time benefits? How many slaves had health insurance and dental and whatever else because of their... Go back 500 years, ask a slave, what's your 401k? Or people that are really concerned with what the heck's going on. So I'm just going to give you a, a, a couple of things for, I hope the anti-MLM crowd and the, the I love MLM crowd will think about. I did a, a webinar. <laughs> yes, Beck says, my owner paid me extra for working more. This is insanity. <laughs> Yeah, were slaves getting paid overtime? Probably four or five, maybe longer than that. It's probably been longer than that now. And it's called the four stages of a movement. And the bottom line, network marketing was an awakening. It was born out of the personal development movement, and it had massive growth. <laughs> the slave that was there picking cotton on the plantation, filling out his uh, time off request form because he's taking the family to Mexico for a vacation. <laughs> That's so stupid. In the 70s, 80s, in the early 90s. And then after the internet hit, there were, we could no longer develop what I call closed cultures, where we could teach systems and uh, the truth, the wisdom of the ages, truth of what it takes to build a network marketing team. And we got into a real speculation stage as an industry. And when any movement moves from, gets away from the fundamentals that create growth, there's always unintended consequences, always. And it doesn't matter what type of movement you're talking about. And network marketing was a movement, an absolute movement. And then it started to get away from the fundamentals, the wisdom of the ages principles, telling people the truth. You know, this is a three to five year game plan to success. Mm -hmm. Your first two years, you're gonna work really hard and you're not gonna get paid that much. But your fourth year, fifth year and beyond, if you build it right, you're going to, you, your income's going to continue to grow and the time necessary to, that you have to spend in your business will diminish. And again, that is if you build it correctly based upon pro proven wisdom of the ages principles, which without question is not being done today. So several years ago, uh, this came out, I think in 1999, the audio cassette, because I was really starting to get concerned. I was seeing people get away, the profession get away from the core fundamentals, looking to find ways to do it quicker, faster, and easier. It's like in this audio, I'm saying, guys, a three to five year game plan to financial independence is good enough. You know, we don't have to stretch the truth and, and, and try to tell people, you know, I'm going to sell you this genealogy list and you call these people and they're going to be ready to join your team. We don't, you know, we need to teach people how to become lead generation uh, experts themselves, master lead generation, you know, and you saw all these lead generation companies pop up, pay us $200 and we'll send you 200 red hot leads that are ready to join your team and so on and so forth. And we just started getting so far away. And again, this was back in 99 from the core fundamentals that this profession was built upon. Uh, I <laughs> audio cassette. I like how he made, he's making a PowerPoint. And uploading this as a YouTube video in the year 2021, this came out. <laughs> and he has the picture of the cassette, too. Recently re-released this course, I, uh, this audio, the original audio. And I've added a lot of other material to it. And it's absolutely free to anybody that really wants to understand the history of this profession and what it really takes to build long-term residual and even legacy income. Leads, baby. Hot and ready leads. In this profession. 
because I can tell you with that, with, without doubt, the path the profession is on today, it's just a social club. It's not a business. It's a social club. Get on your uplines webinar every week. They're going to give you a virtual high five and call you a rock star, even though they and everybody on the team knows you haven't even sponsored your mama yet. It's an industry that's become full of just people that tell people what they want to hear, stroke people's ego in hopes of keeping them on auto ship one more month. And you haven't even recruited your mama yet. You're not taking this seriously enough. And I've talked about all this for many years. Uh, I, I get into a training we recently released. It's over at MLMHelp.com. No, that so poetic that he's using this image of the Wizard of Oz and the man behind the curtain, you know, pulling all the levers and shit. Behind the MLM curtain, three secrets you will not learn anywhere else, ever. This is so poetic because that's a great analogy for what multi-level marketing is. It is the Wizard of Oz. It is all smoke and mirrors and complete deception. Love it. Love it, Dale. That's, that's not it. Uh, it. That's not it. This, that's the wrong URL. Let me change it while I, while I can. It's actually at mlmhelp.com forward slash critical is where the four stages of a movement. This, this is, <laughs> this is. MLM scam second edition. The way this guy speaks just to set up the jokes. Yo, your mama's so fat you haven't even recruited her yet. <laughs> yeah. Dude, this graphic design, like the Rubik's Cube and the cassette, this is like what would be painted on the walls of like a carnival ride, you know? This looks like two things that would be part of like a, a bowling animation, like you got a strike and then a Rubik's Cube comes up and explodes and there's a cassette. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody said, Dale's, this screen grab makes me feel like it would be fun to play laser tag with. <laughs> Just neon branding. Love it. It's worthy. MLMsuccess.com forward slash <laughs> three dash secrets. And if you really want an, uh, an understanding of what it takes uh, to build a team today in today's network marketing environment, this is a training that will really help you. And again, we're in a situation where a lot of self-proclaimed gurus have figured out that the easiest thing in the world is just to tell people what they want to hear so you can so they can sell you what they want to sell you. You are literally a self-proclaimed guru, Dale. I hate to break it to you, my brother, but you are. If you really understood the backstory of most of the people that you think are the MLM Messiah gurus in this profession, if you really understood their backstory, if you really took the time to, to get the facts and, and look behind the curtain, it would scare you to death. It would scare you to death. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, because you would find out that so many people have criminal records and basically everyone is lying, not only about how much money they have, but about their business expertise background and how successful they were before their company. It's all a complete flim flam Wizard of Oz fashion show. Uh, here's a great example. Uh, this, this article I wrote probably four or five years ago, and I did this video because at the time, uh, name the guru, whoever you want to name. The whole pitch back then, four or five years ago, was if you want to be perceived to be a network marketing professional, then you must have a blog. And everybody was selling a blog platform. Uh, you guys remember that. You got to have five years ago, Dale. This video came out end of 2021. So 2020, 19, 18, 17, 16. So you're telling me in 2016, the thing that network marketers were ranting and raving about was blogs? I think you are a few years behind on that, Dale. I have a blog, and, and it was just a, a trumped-up affiliate program, and they were more interested in telling people what they wanted to hear, that if you have a blog, then people will come, and they'll find you, and they'll connect with you, and they'll call you, screaming their credit card number in the phone, begging to join your network marketing downline. Well, we all know that's not true, but what it's been now it's TikTok or whatever is the newest, latest thing. They're going to tell you, I've got, this is the answer. Uh, send me $247 or $97 or whatever the course is. 
and all your network marketing problems will be solved with this new magical social media trick, tip, hack, whatever. And, and just for the record, hi, my name's Dale. Just for the record. <laughs> So, you know, searching for network marketing tips, tricks, and nuggets will delay your success by years. I promise you, by years. That is not the answer. And again, this is at mlmhelp.com forward slash tips. Let me get back on what I really want to make sure I cover here. Wait, so searching for tips is a waste of time, but you give them that information that it's a waste of time on your website? which is giving tips. So you can go check out. I've, I've got a lot of resources here, guys, and they're all free. I'm not going to try to sell you anything at the end of this. There's nothing to pitch you. I I'm predicting that that's not true, but let me see. Yes, Johnny, the donation went through. Hold on. There's a few of them here. Okay, hold on. Thank you to Drew for the donation. $20. Sugar Mama, $50. Thank you, Sugar Mama. Jimmy Moon said Goon Tax and dropped $669. Thank you, Jimmy Moon. And Not Panda, which is Johnny Azul, said, My baby is sleeping because of this guy's voice. Thank you, Johnny Azul. I appreciate that. Appreciate all you guys. Thank you. I would love to get Dale on the channel for a debate. I'm not going to try to sell you anything, but you can go to my website. Again, this is just a mind dump, really, for me. Uh, so, again, this is the state of the profession. Yes, I am involved with the company. Uh, I started the North America launch team about a year ago. Uh, my first two months, I was the number one recruiter in the world out of over 252,000 distributors. And you say, well, yeah, you've been around a lot. But... Yep, just like what I was saying before about the whole John Smith thing. Everybody is the number one recruiter in the world. Everyone is top whatever percent in the, in the whole industry. Everyone is a six-figure, seven-figure earner. <laughs> Every company is the greatest company. Every compensation plan is the best compensation plan in the industry, and on and on and on. But uh, I've been in the top 10 in the world four times my first 10 months with this program, and the majority of people that we're enrolling today, I've never met. They don't know me. I'm, I don't know, know them. And, you know, because I understand that you've got to get the message in the marketplace correctly. And how are 99% of the people telling you to do that? Through some type of video, uh, you know, whether it's TikTok or whether it's doing videos on your stories and so on and so forth. And LOL, Benjamin. It's a mind dump all right. And here's what I know. Most of the people you're looking at, they're good, honest, hardworking people, but they don't want to get in front of a video camera. They don't want to act like something they're not. They just want a proven path that will lead them to success. That's what most people are looking at. And see, here's the thing about it, guys. A year ago, I did this video. It's on YouTube. It's also over at mmsuccess.com forward slash four stars. And in this video, I explained specifically, without question, a year ago, this is the best network opportunity for 2021 and why the facts and honestly if you're looking to make a shift you haven't given up on the network marketing dream yet and you're looking to make a shift the guidelines that I cover in this video will tell you exactly what you should be looking for and in this video at the end specs dropping some bars Dave Calvert pockets feeling fat like my name's Albert I <laughs> Bars. I like that, Specs. And I reveal, you know, what the number one network marketing company opportunity for 2021 is. This is about the time we started the North America launch team. And it, again, some of this information can only come from somebody that's been around as long as I have. I mean, I've been doing this for 40 years. Uh, I started when I was a 20-year-old snot-nosed kid, didn't have a clue what I was doing. But anyway, we did this video, and then just this week, the company that we mentioned at the end of this that met the four stars and met all the criteria that must be there if you want to have a chance at success. You have to have these four stars line up. And again, when I look through YouTube, most of those people 
they were with the wrong company at the wrong time in history. And they had the odds stacked against them from day one. They did. You have to stack the odds in your favor. But, you know, long story short, we did this, this training a year ago. And this week, the company we talked about, APL Go, was voted the number one network marketing company in the world by home business, work at home, business from home, business from home. It was voted number one. Now, this didn't surprise me at all because it met the four stars. And there's reasons people fail. There's reasons people succeed. And most people never really clarify those in their mind. Now, network marketing as a profession absolutely has been on a downhill trend. Good. Uh, Again, because we've allowed self-proclaimed gurus to come in and tell people what they want to hear so they can sell them what they want to sell them. We've allowed that? Bro, that has literally been the model since the very beginning. Since <laughs> At least since Dexter Yeager Amway uh, tool scam days, baby. You know, make sure they get them to the next big seminar in Las Vegas or whatever. And it's just a joke. It's a social club. Uh, again, I have a real... It's not a social club. It's a cult, Dale. It's a cult. Silica says, quote, I've built two multiple seven-figure health businesses, an actual line from the one my brother is dealing with. SMH, man. I actually got a DM yesterday from a a pretty big rapper who I used to work with back in the day. And um, he DM'd me and said, he sent me a story of his cousin who's in uh, an MLM that sells mixed, like the Kool-Aid mix. And she's literally drinking the Kool-Aid. And he messaged me and he said, how far gone is my cousin? And I asked, did some traumatic thing happen to her before she joined this company that they took advantage of? He says, yeah, now that I think about it, they did. There was like uh, a lot of fires in uh, Fort McMurray a few years ago up north in Alberta, and she lost her home. Well, there you go. That's the perfect opening that somebody likely took advantage of to say that's how she was going to rebuild her life and regain control of her life after losing her home to a, to a fire. And now she's in this MLM deep in it. So very sad. Love, hate relationship with this profession. I'm so thankful for what it's meant to me in my life. And it's beyond disturbing what I've watched it become. So I, I sympathize with the MLM haters. I really do. Uh, I, I tell people, if you joined after 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, you, you know, you, you don't. <laughs> Joel says, I mean, he's right. They were at the wrong company at the wrong time in history. Yeah, you're right, technically. Have a chance, more than likely, because the acceptance in the marketplace has just continued to dwindle. And again, I'm being very truthful. Uh, In my podcast, we talk about the paradigm shift of 1994. Yeah, happy juice. She's drinking her healthy happy juice. Five. In my opinion, 1995 was the peak of the network marketing business model. It really caught steam and momentum in the 70s, the 80s. Not the early 90s were phenomenal. And then in 95, it peaked right after Success Magazine came out with the article, We Create Millionaires, the cover story. And that's when Success Magazine was really Success Magazine and not just a promotional piece. And people started to realize, hey, there's, because at that time we were still in a closed culture. And people started to realize, hey, there's other companies out there besides Herbalife or OxyFresh or whatever other company. And it changed. That was the shift. And today, you know, everybody's told, go on social media, do this, do this, do this on social media. And I don't care what you're doing on social media. I don't care what you're doing. If someone tells you to launch your business on social media, run. It will not work. That is not the way to launch your business. It's just not. It's a valuable tool when used correctly and used sequentially at the right time. But, you know, it's just like, you know, before everybody was telling people they had to blog, they were telling people you got to go on YouTube and do a video every day and, and call yourself a network marketing consultant, trainer, guru, or whatever. That was the trend. There's always trends. And every trend that I've seen since 2000 has been misinformation, terrible information, 
being taught by people that don't have a clue. Most of them have never built a significant team. And again, but they did. They said this. They said they were the number one money earner in that. Yeah, but what company? Why don't they ever mention the company? I'm not saying they weren't. I'm just saying what they were doing was a scam. They were the number one money earner in a scam or whatever. Do your homework. Look behind the curtain. Always ask, who is this person? Why am I listening to them? Why am I listening to them? Uh, what was I talking about? Um, I was going to show you another article. I mean, to his comment about looking behind the curtain, well, how can you really look behind the curtain if the people who are behind the curtain are just going to lie about what's behind the curtain? If looking behind the curtain is asking, who is this person? Why should I listen to them? And then that person responds by saying, well, I'm the number one network marketer in this company for this many years and I've made this much money. How are you going to prove or disprove that? You know, they have answers for that too. Ask them to show you their bank account. They'll show you a fake bank statement or they'll say, you know, there's people who need proof and there's people who have faith. Robert talks in Pontianomics about his story about being with CBC Marketplace and they did a hidden camera investigation of some MLM and he used the calculator to show that the eight by eight, uh, you know, recruiting scheme they were pitching was mathematically impossible. And the guy at the, the presenter just brushed it off by saying, some people, the people who are winners, they just believe in what's in front of them. And there are other people who are doubters who need calculators. And who won? Well, of course, the recruiter won because he had the appeal to authority fallacy. He had already been standing up there at the front of the room with his suit on talking about how amazing he was and how amazing his opportunity was. The crowd was already on his side. The one who holds the microphone is in the position of power, of course. Oh, YouTube. Okay, this is an article. I don't know when this was done, probably four or five, six years ago, maybe. But at the time, there were over 42,000 self-proclaimed network marketing gurus, ninjas, masters, rock stars, consultants, and trainers on YouTube. We did the, we did the numbers. 42,000, most of which accounts today are dormant. But why? Because everybody was telling everybody, go on YouTube, you know, and make videos. And the reality is that is terrible advice for 97% of the people of the population around the world. Now it's the same thing. It's just they're saying TikTok. Guys, the amount of misinformation that has been propagated throughout this profession is overwhelming. It Guys, the amount of misinformation that I've propagated throughout this video is overwhelming. It's just ridiculous when you just sit back because real business-minded people think to themselves, what the heck are these people doing? What are they doing? What do they think they're doing? I mean, it, it, it's just, it's really, it's really unbelievable. I tell people, the only people you're going to attract with your video are people that like being entertained by you instead of watching cat videos. Are those really the people that you're looking for in your business? Are you looking for bored people sitting at home Watching cat videos? Are you looking for career frustrated, business minded people, people that are trapped in a corporate corporate cubicle? I mean, really, really, the the demographic, the the top demographic of TikTok is seven thirteen to seventeen year olds. Is that your demographic? Oh yeah, Dale. But these these platforms age up. They don't all age up. Most of them do. But do you really think TikTok will? It may. But is that good? But is that valuable use of your time right now? Is it really? Well, give us the alternate solution here, Dale. You know? And of course, somebody asks a great question here. Susie, why stay in an industry that has this much information that you hate what it's become and you're so critical of it? Well, because, of course, all of them are the exception. No, I'm the ethical one. I'm the good one. The rest are scams. All those other MLM companies, those are scams. How many times do I have to make in-depth, you know, infiltrating a pyramid scheme videos where I show you the recruiters saying that about every other MLM company? Like, again, I've heard people in MLM companies refer to Amway as Scamway, even though Amway is literally the template that they all follow. Insanity. Really? It's just amazing to me. So again, I've talked about these two, and this is the last one I, I hope you'll take a listen to, and it's called Predatory MLM. A lot of the, the people that are in the anti-MLM movement 
uh, feel like they were taken advantage of and lied to, and many of them were. And for those of you that are trying to build a business and build it correctly, I don't think there's any time place that you should ever ask your people to do more business, to buy more product than is required from their monthly PV. Thank you, Kizzy Parks. Appreciate that super sticker. Thank you, thank you. Whatever their monthly PV requirement is, BV, PV, whatever that you, your company calls it. Don't ever do that because once you cross that line, then you can, you can go down predatory paths. And I Don't buy more than your required PV. Well, then isn't the simple workaround just to increase the amount of required PV so that you end up front-loading more? Becoming garage qualified, as they say. I've seen it happen to many good people, really good people. Who is more boring on their respective uh, platforms? Dale on his YouTube channel or Scott and Peter on their radio show? This is absolutely mind-numbingly bad from just from a content perspective. Uh, that started out with great intentions. And before you know it, they're really pressuring people and they don't understand your team doesn't work for you. Your job is to work for your team. Uh, I could go on and on, but I won't. And as I, as I talk through this, it's like, Dale, you're anti-MLM too. You know, I, I'm not anti-MLM. I'm just disgusted that we didn't do a better job at calling out the shysters. I, I really Ooh, shyster. That's what Scott and Peter call me, a known shyster. Again, wow, it's crazy. The three of them, he could actually be the third musketeer with Scott and Peter on Losing Fortunes Radio because he is checking all the same boxes that they check. It's just MLM. <laughs> I'm just anti-MLM when it's done wrong. All these shysters out here in the industry. Insanity. Generate leads. Woo! Who do you think has sicker leads? Dale or Peter Mingles? Really am. And we didn't do a better job of taking care of the goose that's laying the golden eggs. And again, this profession absolutely changed my life. I don't know where I would be today if I hadn't found the network marketing business model. I, I, I sincerely don't. But guys, the numbers, the numbers do not lie. This is the amount of interest people have in network marketing. And you can see if you looked, if we could go back and chart like 1970, you send uptick, uptick, year after year after year after year after year after year to about 95. Dude, and this is on 1.25 speed. Like, let me put it on normal speed just for a second, just to see. Up, and then it would start chopping, 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 and then it peaked again here. And then you can see it's just been on a downward trend ever since for the last 10 years. So that's the state of the industry. And, you know, you can quote whoever you want to quote about Stone Cold Facts, Better Way. Okay, now it's on 1.5. Or whatever you want to say. And it is. It's the number one opportunity in the world for average people with above average desire <laughs> to create financial independence and even legacy wealth. But you know what? Nobody. <laughs> average people with above average desire, financial freedom, independence, generational wealth. It's just such a fucking obvious con. No legitimate opportunity would ever use those words, ever. Nobody's talking about that. They're all talking about, all they're trying to do is get people to go on social media, sell as many products as they can, so their BB helps the leaders check next month. Next month. It's like, tell people whatever I can tell them to keep them on auto ship one more month. If you, if you fall into that trap, you're just asking for trouble. And again, when a movement gets away from the core fundamentals, there's always unintended consequences. So if I've said anything that's made any sense for you, and if you're really serious, uh, I was talking to a young man today, 35 years old, and he says it's time for me to really get serious. He's been around the profession for five, six, seven years. He's with a very, very credible company, but that company has peaked. Uh, the, the growth is over. Uh, it's not going to rebound. It's not. And he's realizing that, and that's why he contacted me. And the first thing I asked him, I said, why are you doing network marketing? You know, there's, a, there's so many opportunities today to create a side gig income that can be built into a full-time income. Why network marketing? And he said, because I've never seen, I've not seen any other business model out there that will allow me to build a residual income that will give me time to enjoy my kids and my 
my family. And I said, bingo, that's exactly right. There's not. It's the greatest opportunity in the history of the world. For average <laughs> people with above average It's the greatest opportunity in the history of the world. That is true, but there's an if on the end. It's true when you add the if. It is the greatest income opportunity in the world if you are willing to deceive people at such a massive scale that you beat the odds of the 99 point something percent failure rate across all MLMs that have ever been studied in history and screw over enough people convincing them to keep paying into the system to boost up your monthly earnings, then it can really be a life-changing amount of money and you can see absolutely stunning returns on your investment. But it's going to take a lot of work, a lot of lying, having no conscience, basically being a sociopath or a psychopath, and you will be dedicating all of your time to it. Even once you get to that point where you're making a lot of money, the idea that it is residual income is a complete lie. Desire to build financial independence if the four stars line up. So I've, got, I've given you a lot of re resources. If you're serious, I know some of these podcast sessions and some of the trainings I've shared will really help you and speak to you. And th this is the last thought that I want to leave you with for all of you that are, are living, you know, dreaming the dream is number one, always ask yourself, who is this person and why should you dream in the, he almost said live in the dream. Then he's like, live it, dream in the dream. <laughs> should I be listening to them? Understand and ask yourself, am I involved in somebody that's teaching me to build a business or am I just part of a social club? Am I part of a tribe? Am I there to get my ego stroked or am I involved and am I profitable? And am I moving forward every single month, every single day, every single week, every single month? Am I moving forward? Am I progressing in my business? Because the truth is you are or you're not. And I've got a podcast on that too called You Are or You're Not. And to thy own self be true. But to those of you that are having success and you're moving forward, you know, the, the, the thought I want to leave you with is the, the quote by Edmund Burke, and I know you probably heard it. And that is all that is required for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. Good men. That's why I'm doing something, Dale. And good women, good people to do nothing. And again, I think in many ways, the network marketing profession is just a reflection of the world in which we live, honestly. But it's all of our responsibility. You know, it was like when everybody was telling people, if you want to be perceived to be a network marketing professional, then you must have a blog. And if you will do an article, three articles a week, then you're going to have people come to your website and connect with you and want to join. And for 97% of the people, that is not true. And, and, and if you know something's not true, to say nothing, and I'm not going to say evil will triumph, I'm not, because there's a lot of people in this profession, they're good people. They, they were just raised in the wrong culture. And they were three percenters, and they were able to do what 97% of the population and 97% of the people on their team will never be able to do. They entered the profession with transferable skills, God-given talent, skills, and abilities, and they were able to enter the profession with those skills and abilities, and they, they thought everybody could do what they're doing, and they'd find out the hard way that they can't. I just want to show you one more thing. This is a resource. Why didn't you edit this down, Dale? It's available on Amazon. That will be a really good read for you. Oh, yeah, it's a book. Uh, I, again, I wrote this about the same time I did the scam audio, back in 99, 2000. Because, again, I saw this get... You can get the booklet and CD. Not the booklet, the booklet and CD. <laughs> Why the masses of network marketers are frustrated, confused, and don't have a clue what they are doing. I saw the profession getting away from the core fundamentals. But it's... Network marketing training book CD. Why the masses of network marketing? He's recording. He's recording this audio like his mom is in the next room, and he, he's trying not to wake her up. Network marketing training book and CD. Why the masses frustrated, confused, and don't have a clue what they're doing? And again, this is a booklet and the CD version of it. CD, a CD in 2021. I like. Remember earlier he said he wasn't selling anything, and I was like, get my booklet and my CD. Network marketing training book and CD. Why the people don't know what they're doing? The box set, 1997. Pamphlet, box set, wow, a, pa a pamphlet? When, when you said booklet and CD, I wasn't going to buy it. But now that I know there's a pamphlet, let's go. Someone buy me this. Special collector's package. <laughs>
Special network marketing CD and booklet combo special from America's number one no fluff MLM trainer, Dale Calvert. If you are frustrated with your lack of production and the training you are receiving in your network marketing business, this booklet will provide you insight and the answers you are looking for to get yourself and your team on the right path to success. Just the weird capitalizations in different spots. This information has helped thousands of network marketers can on the path to MLM success and stay on it. Special collectors. <laughs> Amazon, if you just go to dalecalvert.com forward slash masses. And obviously I didn't do this to sell this, but it just came to my mind because again, you've got to get a clear picture of the market in which you're trying to work and understanding uh, why there is so much anti MLM out there and how to combat it, how to ignore it, how to work through it. But the main thing that you've got to be able to do <laughs> is give yourself a chance to win. And the way you <laughs> Yeah, maybe he's in the garage hiding from his wife like Scott and Peter. Hilarious. You're going to do that. Again, I'm going to share this with you one more time because it's important. Is This will give you the outline. And this outline is something that you'll be able to follow the rest of your career because this is what you want to look for, the four stars which are covered here. Because if there's one star missing, it, it doesn't reduce your chance of success. I got to see that. I gotta and see. You think, okay, I gotta see the four star video. Four stars, twenty five percent each is is hundred percent. So, well, I'm missing this star, Dale, but that still gives me a seventy five percent chance of success. No, it doesn't. It gives you zero chance. Okay. If you're missing one of the four stars, you're you're with the wrong company. Are the four stars be coachable? Have the right company? Have the right leader? And be in the right moment in history? Are those the four stars? And the odds of you making it in today's environment is slim to none. Slim to none. It's not. It's not 1995 anymore. In 1995, you could go into any company and say, "Tell me about somebody that's never been in network marketing. They just joined. They just joined, and they they got to a hundred thousand dollars plus a year within their first five years. And every company in the profession at that time could give you story after story after story of people that that happened for. You won't find that now." in this profession. The market's changed. Things have changed. It's shifted. And if you're going to win in today's network marketing world, uh, there's probably not anybody in your upline that can show you how to do it because the odds are they've just taken their team from company to company to company. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the thing that you have to look at is, okay, who have... LOL, Janet, this is exactly like one of those commercials. For $19.99, you can get the best love song CD with recording artists like Luther Vandross, Kenny G, Michael Bolton, and you'll get a two and you'll get a second CD. Just pay extra shipping and handling. They taught to make a six-figure income. Who have they taught? Well, Dale, they're making $472 a month. Okay, that's that's awesome. $472,000 a year. Awesome. What? Four hundred seventy-two dollars a month is four hundred seventy-two thousand dollars a year. What are their top people on their team, uh, their, their leaders making? What are they making? What is their background? Who has started with your company? <laughs> the four stars: lying, manipulating, shaming, gaslighting. <laughs> yeah, for real. Who's never been involved in network marketing? Who started with them and created a six-figure income within five years, three to five years? And if you don't see evidence of that happening, something's wrong. Something's wrong. So again, I appreciate your attention. If you if you got value from this, uh, please uh, hit a like or whatever you're supposed to do on Facebook and go check out our Facebook. podcast sometime. There's some thought-provoking information there. Uh, again, I love this profession, but I despise it. And I feel for these anti-MLM people. I sincerely do. Why? Uh, again, many of them are just thumb suckers. Okay. That had no business even being involved in network marketing to start with, and they're just trying to ride ride the coattails of anti MLMers that are selling merch and trying to get their YouTube's video counts up so they can monetize their channel. Uh, that's what's really going on there as wow. well. So anti MLMers, people that love it, network marketing, I always appreciate your feedback and your comments. Again, uh, my name is Dale Calvert. I've lived it. I understand it. I've helped other other people live it. I I I am coming from experience. And, and I really hope that you got value, uh, got value from this. And if you did, leave your comments. If you hated everything that you've just heard, leave your comments. I read them. I, I love the feedback because it gives me a, a different perspective sometime and insight or many times just confirmation of what other people, a lot of people are feeling. I think the thing that probably makes me a little bit different is I'm not afraid to say what I feel, what I see, 
what I've, what I've experienced. If it steps on somebody's toes, it steps on somebody's toes. But as Jim Rohn taught years ago, you have to care enough about people to tell them what they need to hear, not necessarily what they want to hear. So again, my name is Dale Calvert. Thanks for listening. Uh, subscribe to this channel uh, and check out our podcast and some of the resources that we share with you in the description. And I wish you much, much success. Have a good one. God bless. Okay, so he has a follow-up video uh, called Six Reasons the Anti-MLM Talking Heads Have Zero Credibility. I want to look at that one. We're not going to watch the whole thing, but there are some moments I want to look at. Um, I don't want to make this stream too long, but I have to pee first, so give me a minute. I'm going to be right back. I just got to go to the washroom real quick. Yeah, damn. Obama. I was holding that for a minute. For a long while. Sweat, yeah, I should have sweated it out. Thumbs up the stream, y'all. Let's get them going and get the likes up. Thumbs up the team. Okay. All right. Pee in a cup. Yeah, I should just have a catheter in when I stream, right? Uh, let's see. Okay, there are comments on this video. Let's check out some of these comments here. We have comments. Here's one from Is Isabella Lanter, who I'm familiar with. Uh, this is a long thing, and I read it earlier today just when I pulled up this video. I hadn't watched the full thing, but I will say this. She says, Dale, unless you're truly going to pay attention and use your mind to actually see what people are doing with this movement, pipe down. A beautiful example of a man mansplaining what we are doing without an ounce of context. Let me pause right here, okay? When it comes to people like Dale or Dominic Izzo, you guys can go watch that debate on my channel. I'm sure a lot of you have seen it by now. Dominic, during that debate, was so hell-bent on pushing this idea that anti-MLM is just made up of these bitter, scorned women and that the entire anti-MLM movement on YouTube was just an outlet for these women to vent their, you know, bitchiness and complain and not take accountability. And even people like Scott and Peter, they have the audacity to call the anti-MLM female creators the anti-MLM Huns. Well, the term hun came from women in MLMs trying to recruit other women going, hey, hun. So 
<laughs> how can you call them Huns now that they're out? But they're trying to make this assertion that they're not actually, they might be out. They're trying to make this assertion that while they might be out of their MLM now, they're not actually trying to help free people from MLM cults. They're just transferring that cult tendency to their own online following, which is, of course, complete nonsense. But the point I want to make here is you look at the thumbnail of Dale's video here that we just watched. This is the thumbnail, okay? It's this whiny old woman with glasses, big glasses and lipstick and hair, and this is what he chose, the truth behind the anti-MLM movement. I sense that Dale is getting at the same argument here, which is that this is just whiny, emotional, bitchy women who are, you know, being toxic in their own way by talking about MLM, and they truly have no idea what they're talking about, and they're just using this to try to grift and make money and complain. Well, obviously, I don't think that that is the case. When I see a comment like Isabella's content here, sorry, when I see a comment like Isabella's comment here, obviously, she's correct in everything that she's saying, and that Dale is spitting complete nonsense in this video. But when she says in this comment, a beautiful example of a mansplaining, sorry, when she says in this comment, a beautiful example of a man mansplaining what we are doing without an ounce of context, I think when you say something like that to a person like Scott and Peter or like Dale or like Dominic Izzo, that only makes them revert into their shell of defensiveness even harder. And it galvanizes their view that they already had, which is that this is just a bunch of raging feminists who hate men and are just complaining. That's the idea that I, that's the sentiment that I got from Dominic Izzo during our debate, for sure. And when you use words like mansplaining, against them that only in my opinion that is only going to reaffirm their belief that this is just bitchy women hating on men obviously i don't agree with that would i use the term mansplaining no i wouldn't use the term mansplaining i i personally have my own um you know thoughts about the use of that word but he's absolutely being condescending you know, you could say he's being condescending, but when it comes to saying he's mansplaining, I think it's, a, I, I think it's an error to say that. And, and hopefully, uh, if, Isabella, if you see this, I, I want you to know I got a lot of respect for what you do. Um, hopefully we can have disagreements on very minor things like the usage of certain words and still have respect for one another. I hope you don't unfollow me for saying that I don't like the uh, usage of the word mansplaining, but I've been unfollowed by <laughs> anti-MLM creators for a lot less than that, so I'm not holding my breath. But Anyways, much respect to you, Isabella. I have no, uh, no issue with, with Isabella or anyone in the anti-MLM scene. But if I'm going to be truly objective here, I have to try to see it from both sides, as crazy as that sounds, because I'm obviously clearly anti-MLM. I wouldn't use the term mansplaining in my personal life because I do think that is a sexist term. I do think if you use the word mansplaining, it is a buzzword, and I do think it's just going to make the other person not take you as seriously, especially so when we're dealing with people like Dale, Scott and Peter, Dominic Izzo, etc. I think the term mansplaining is sexist. I have never heard anyone ever unironically say that someone is womansplaining. Could people be condescending? Could people be rude? Yes. But to say that someone is mansplaining because they are a man explaining, even if what they are saying is nonsense, I don't think is, is the right approach. It is completely sexist. And, you know, you could, you could literally disarm any man you are arguing with by saying that he is mansplaining. I, as a man, if I was to disagree with someone and give my uh, opinion and explain why I think the way I think, they could just shut me down and say, well, you're mansplaining <laughs> because I'm a man explaining. It's sort of like uh, there's a really good video on YouTube that came out earlier this year or maybe at the end of last year called What Are We Doing to White People? And really good video. I recommend you go watch it. It's got like 4 million views. The term mansplaining uh, being used unironically makes me think of like 
I've seen videos where people are just being blatantly racist towards white people, and they're trying to say, well, white people, you can't be racist towards a white person because white people haven't experienced the historical... Bl and, and that's just complete nonsense. I thought that racism was having prejudice against someone because of the color of their skin. And so if your immediate default opinion of white people is that they are bad because X, Y, and Z, and you're determining that they are that because of their skin color, well, I'm sorry, that's racist. I don't care what, uh, it's a very simple one plus one equals two observation to make. Being racist towards any group, any ethnicity is racist. You absolutely can be racist towards white people. So uh, I think, anyways, it's sort of a side, it's sort of a side blurb, but I think when dealing with people like Dominic and Peter and Scott and Dale, you do have to give, you have to try to put yourself in their shoes. And again, I know this is going to go over so many heads, but if I have, I have no problem with anyone making anti MLM content. I think that every person who makes anti MLM content is providing value regardless of how many views they get. Because if you were once in an MLM, or even if you weren't, if you make videos explaining how a certain company or how the entire industry of multi-level marketing is harmful, and you help one person to get out of their company, you have saved a life and you have done a good thing. So every single person who makes anti-MLM content, I, I very much appreciate. Disclaimer, okay? Now we're good, we got that. I know people are gonna edit this later or like relay what, I, what I'm about to say uh, without providing the context that I just provided, but hopefully, I mean, fuck it, who cares? My channel's doing fine, who cares? Um, that being said, a lot of anti-MLM channels are effectively drama channels, okay? And in my own experience from being in this sphere, as far as I know, I'm the only like guy in this sphere at, at this level. So what I have observed is that there is a lot of animosity between anti-MLM creators. That's probably why Dominic and Scott and Peter and Dale think that this is just a, you know, click of bitchy women because they can't even get along with each other. I think it definitely makes us as a, as a movement look bad when even the people that we agree with, we have beef with. It, I, I think that is a shame. And when it comes to uh, the efforts of anti-MLM creators, I think all of the women who make anti-MLM content, I'm pretty sure they're all like married, have children, have families, like they have other shit to worry about. So I'm, I'm not tripping that they do live streams and they talk about, uh, you know, drama or gossip. I don't expect that everyone is going to take six months out of their life like I do to do a hidden camera investigation and do this whole thing and... Obviously, I don't think that's what everyone's going to do. And again, I think everyone who does anti-MLM is providing value. But when I look at the content that is posted by anti-MLM folks, between them posting about MLM and their families and their kids and their pets and their other social movements that they're you know supportive of or not supportive of and just... There's not even a lot of anti-MLM content going on to begin with. So I see, again, I can see why Peter and Scott and Dale and Dominic would cling to certain elements of what they see as their proof for why these women are just trying to make money and it's just a grift for them. Again, I don't agree with that, but I'm trying my darndest to be Socratic about, about the way I look at it so that hopefully... I can appeal to these people's sensibilities and get through to them. Another element of that is I have, never, I have never been in an MLM. I have never been in an MLM. So they can't say that I am just a scorned formid, former distributor who perpetuated all of these harmful acts and I'm, I'm using this excuse that it was my upline who told me to do it. And like they can't use that against me. And I'm also not a woman, so hopefully... You know, if me and Dale do end up having a conversation, hopefully we can have a productive one. As, as nonsensical as the things that Dominic Izzo said in our conversation were, I do think it was probably the most productive back and forth that we could have had considering 
how deep in the matrix and how deep in the sunken place of MLM he is. But I, I anticipate that in this next video we're going to watch here called Six Reasons the Anti-MLM Talking Heads Have Zero Credibility. I'm guessing that Dale is going to say the things that I just talked about. These are just angry, scorned women. Uh, They're just grifting to try to make money. They themselves are perpetuating the same negative uh, behaviors that they're critiquing in their own videos. What they are doing is just as bad, if not worse, and on and on and on. Again, I don't agree with them, and I obviously am team anti-MLM. I'm just saying there are, nobody's perfect. I don't agree with everything that everyone does, okay? I'm just saying I'm trying my darndest to put myself in their shoes and think, okay, why do they think the way that they think? What is keeping them so burrowed in their beliefs? So hopefully I didn't just get canceled again, but you know, I love it anyways. You know, rise above, be the change you wish to see in the world. If you don't like Dominic Izzo complaining about all these horrid women and whatever he, whatever he says and calling them pigs and bitches and whatever else, then don't use words like mansplaining. That's sexist as well. Sorry. All right. Janet Miller says it's not sexist. Men can explain, but if it's but it's if you are condescending or not. Okay, well then just say that they're condescending. You it becomes sexist when you put the word man in front of it. You why why are you specifying that it's a man? A woman could be condescending too, but no one would ever say woman splaining. Again, it's just it opens up a can of worms for no reason. We we should be able to disagree and respect each other without uh, attributing somebody's condescension or thing that we disagree with to their gender or their race. You know, same thing. All right, ladies, mansplaining is when a man... <laughs> so funny, Jared. <laughs> Jared says, all right, ladies, mansplaining is when a man explains something to the women folk because they don't understand like the men do. So fucking funny. So funny. Uh, you know, hashtag listen to men's voices. Um, what up, Trey Tino? Yeehaw. Trey Tino on some cowboy ting. Where is it? Where's the yeehaw? Where is it? Yeehaw. It's bull wrangling time. Will I talk to Glenn again? For sure. Let's see. Did I lose viewers? No, we're good. Um, there's several anti-MLM women who are single and haven't been in MLM. Okay. Maybe I just don't. Maybe I'm just not familiar. Um, no, it's where. Okay, all right. So let's check this out. This video we're not gonna get through. Uh, but I just want to check out some some parts because this this guy talks very slow and drags a lot of points on, and he doesn't edit. So six reasons the anti MLM talking heads have zero credibility. Hey, this is Dale Calvert. I'd like to welcome you to this session. Uh, we're going to talk about six reasons the anti-MLM talking heads have zero credibility, provide no value. Is it just me or is it super quiet? To the marketplace, six very distinct reasons. I'm also going to share with you an article that is very, that's certainly for it, is it for me and many other people. You know, there's some people that are very smart. They have very high IQs. And because of that, it, it prevents them from really seeing sometimes things that are really clear and obvious because of these people on YouTube and so on and so forth. I'm going to just find parts where he's actually making a point. Going on at the same time. Who need to be called out? And he said, just. And apparently, he spends a lot of time talking about this woman, Jessica Hickson. So I'm just going to skip past that because, as far as I understand, she doesn't do this content anymore. And I don't want to bring her back into some shit. Never tr see. Okay. So he gives this, uh, makes this point here. Never try to explain yourself with logic and reason to emotional people. Your fiends. I think he means friends, don't need an explanation. I think he means an explanation. And your enemies aren't going to believe. I think he spelled, did he spell believe wrong? Is it E-I? Nope, I was wrong. Cut that, edit that out. A and your enemies aren't going to believe you anyway. Okay, complete nonsense. Easy, easy way to just deflect and not take any criticism. He spends a long time talking about that. 
Next, he says, to me. an experiment was conducted. And this is really kind of where I am with all this. An experiment was conducted to see if greyhounds this. I love this. could compete. Why, why is it not showing me it properly? An experiment was conducted to see if greyhounds could compete with the speed of a cheetah. When the cages opened, folks were shocked that the cheetah didn't move. They asked the race coordinator what had happened and why the cheetah didn't move. His response, sometimes trying to prove that you're the best is an insult to your self-worth. There is no need to lower yourself to other people's level to make them understand your skills, qualities, and contributions. It is better to save your energy for more worthy endeavors. A cheetah uses its speed to hunt, not to prove to dogs that it is faster and stronger. Okay, so basically, this is his deflection and his way of saying why he's not going to engage in actual, any actual productive discourse because he is the cheetah and everyone else is dogs. Great. And he spends a long time talking about that. Um, let's see is it what's what's their grief and i understand we're all flawed human beings i mean when i joined network marketing I, there's no way in the world i was the most least likely to succeed to ever enter this profession living in a small little six i'm gonna skip his anecdote and just read his point we are all flawed human beings network marketing doesn't make you lie cheat steal and belittle people yes it does that mode of operation was in you before you joined an mlm company and the anti-mlm content on youtube should make that obvious that is completely categorically false dale I have talked to thousands, sorry, I have heard from thousands of people, whether it be in comments, on YouTube, Reddit, messages, uh, people that I've talked to directly out in the real world, people that recognize me and come up to me, I've heard the stories, either firsthand or reading comments of thousands of people who talk about how they felt themselves change because of the environment that they were in, in that MLM company they were in. How the slow, systematic indoctrination and cult brainwashing tactics and the culture of the people they were around changed who they were and made them say and do things that they wouldn't have otherwise done unless they were under the undue influence of a cult. And that's exactly what happened. So this is just so ignorant. Here he says, most of the anti-MLM crowd were involved in one company and experience just enough to be dangerous to themselves and others living in a world of self-pity. Well, how do you explain me then? Some point out perceived misjustices to profit from victims seeking a tribe who don't want to accept any personal responsibility. So here he's asserting that, oh, did I miss showing this page? We're all flawed human beings. Okay, you saw this. Um, Okay, this is ridiculous. Here he says, some point out perceived misjustices to profit from victims seeking a tribe who don't want to accept any personal responsibility. Get it out, get over it, and move on. Living your life as a victim is unhealthy. I agree that living your life as a victim is unhealthy, but saying get it out, get over it, and move on when it comes to something like this where people are making content to try to help others who may still be stuck in it or who might be prospected and search up the name of a company and they are saved from joining that company. Again, this is just, you know, Dominic Izzo did this as well, saying that you guys are just trying to profit. These women are just trying to profit off their videos and their merchandise and their affiliate links. So they're trying to make the assertion that these women never actually... It wasn't the MLM. These women were already grifters and manipulative people before that, and they were manipulative people in the MLM, and now they're manipulating people using uh, leveraging victim stories and, and, you know, sob stories, essentially, to profit from victims even still. Complete, complete nonsense. 13 surprising traits of predatory people that you might just overlook. Well, where did they get them from? Here we go. Oh, Martin Luther King. <laughs> Cannot drive out darkness. So oh my God. Not the grandstanding. Their real motive is to profit with merch, memberships, and YouTube views. Most people are smart enough to understand their real motives, but some aren't. We all understand that. And then here he shows thumbnails from several anti MLM creators. Your intelligence can be used for good. You don't have to attempt to profit from the ignorant. There is nothing noble in being superior to your fellow man. True nobility is being superior to your former self. Oh, my gosh. Buzzwords and quotes and bars for days. Let's see what you guys are saying here in the chat real quick. 
Thank you, EUC Vibes. Really appreciate the dono. I'll hit the X-Files for you. Here you go. There you go. There you go. Okay, did I miss anyone? Okay. Marco, you haven't done a Trump voice yet. It's going to hurt my throat. Pause. Dale and Jessica went back and forth. Like, Dale made a video, and then Jessica would make a response, then Dale would make a response to the response. Sounds like me and Scott and Peter. Dale did a dump. Is Dale a big kitten? He's a big cat. What up, Hopi Nay? Tardy to the party. That's a demerit. So true. So true. Um... Peace out, Shifter. I didn't stop posting videos. Okay. And I think there was a donation from somebody. I want to make sure I don't miss that or I'll feel bad. And we wouldn't want that, would we? Uh, Nick Yuli? Or is it Nika Lee? Or is it Nicole? Nicole. It's Nicole. Nicole dropped $50 and she said, found your channel a few weeks ago and I've been addicted. More power to you, Marco. Thank you so much. Wow. Really appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Let's get back to this. Even if they don't succeed financially, they're going to be better people. And I could sit here and tell you story after story of people that we've had the honor and the pleasure to work with over the years that for whatever reason, uh, network marketing financially was not a windfall for them, but they were able to progress in other, many other areas in their life. You know, I, I always talk about a young man I met named Shackley, Greg Stegner, and, and Greg, you know, he was, he was a lumber salesman. And, you know, we got him plugged into the magic of thinking big and the personal development aspect. He became an assistant supervisor, which means he had some work ethic and leadership. It wasn't a high rank, but he, he was able to rank up and move forward, and then his work transferred him and he was moved outside of the Lexington, Kentucky area where we were at the time, and we lost contact about 10, 11 years later. Another point of nonsense I heard. The number one personal development program on the planet, better or bitter. So even if you lost money, he says, you still self-improved so it wasn't a waste. Just another deflection to deviate from the point that they lie about the time freedom and financial freedom opportunity that is multi-level marketing. Well, you, you did enjoy some of the products that you used, right? And, and you did improve your mindset, right? So it wasn't all bad. We saw this one going back and forth. With a straight face, 100% ignore the point. Why would I do scam and predatory plus the lie the entire anti-MLM niche propagates? Let's see what he's talking about. Should you go full-time when you're making $1,000 more a month part-time than you are in your full-time job, and you do that for three consecutive months? Y'all heard me say that many, many different yeah, times. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with and that. I, I got grief over this. Oh, he's reacting to her video. Let me skip ahead because I don't want to bring her back into know nothing. Talking heads have zero credibility. Unbelievable, off-the-wall, ridiculous. MLM. Whoops, whoops, whoops. And that's the only reason. Here we go. The entire anti-MLM movement is built upon... <laughs> the entire anti-MLM movement is built upon sand. False information. Here he uses the thumbnail from my friend James Janney's video, The MLM Cults. Very good video. Uh, very good guy. Number one, for the people on top to make money, everyone else must lose money or it doesn't work. Not true in the real world. This business is not a mathematical formula. It, it a business vehicle, just like a franchise, an eBay business, or whatever. No, it's not. Go watch my interview with Doug Brooks to understand why it's not like a franchise. Using mathematics in attempt to prove a business model is not valid, and then coming to the conclusion that most people must fail for it to work is ridiculous, illogical, and not true. You heard it here first, folks. Math is illogical. You shouldn't use math to try to determine whether something is a good business or not. 
One persona says it, and then the parrots start repeating it, and they all sound like bitter fools. Where did the people at the top start? This is actually a good question from Dale. A lot of people, in, even in anti-MLM, wrongly state and wrongly think that in order to be successful in MLM, you had to get in early. Well, then someone like Dale might ask you the question, well, where did the people at the top start? They could start early. They could have got in early, but there's actually another way. And in my opinion, this other way is the way that most people I have looked at who are high up in MLM actually got there. I'll give you an example. Alex Morton is a great example. Alex Morton joined Vima when he was a young man and he was in, and he was, as far as I know, their number one recruiter. After Vima got shut down for being a pyramid scheme, or rather right before they got shut down for being a pyramid scheme, he went to another company, UNES. And when UNES got in trouble, he went to another company, International Markets Live, which was later renamed to IM Academy. Alex Morton may not have started at the very top of Vima. He might have been in there early, but even if he hadn't, there's another way to beat the 99% odds and get to the top. And that is being willing to deceive people at such a scale and for such a long time that there is no, that, that you just move past the predetermined 99% failure rate. If you are willing to lie and lie and lie and posture and fake flex and lie and lie and lie, you can become successful in a multi-level marketing company. And I believe that is how most of the people who are successful in multi-level marketing get there. And even if those people who are at the top did so because they got in early enough, well, you can spend one day looking at the content they post or attend one of their trainings or Zoom meetings or watch one of their speeches that was posted online. And you can see that they too are lying and lying and lying because you gotta lie to get to the top. And even if you didn't lie to get to the top, you gotta continue to lie to stay at the top. And I'll do it as clearly as possible because I, okay. He goes on rants with this on the same slide. Like, look how long he's on this slide. That's how I got started. We all. And then he's going back to the better or bitter one. Because if you believe in personal development, then you have to believe that you have some control. What if it is true? LOL. Okay, here we go. Then anti-MLM creators act like this never happened. What about all these magazines that show the success stories of different people? I hope, Dale, you wouldn't think too low of me if I said that even some of this was lies. I hope you wouldn't think too low of me. It can be built today. There's some four and five star companies out there. Why is it so quiet? Number four, they refuse to acknowledge that there is a proven investigation process to follow before joining MLM company that they didn't follow and most don't. I think that is the opposite of true. As a matter of fact, in my experience, there is such a lack of disclosure, the, again, how many times do I have to say it? The whole thing relies on deception from start to finish. Even after someone leaves an MLM company, more deception, more deception is required because you would not believe how many people I've heard from who say, after I left the company, these people who I thought were my family, I thought were my friends, all spread rumors and talked shit about me. I had a broke mindset. I didn't believe. I'm a quitter. I'm a traitor. A traitor. Because you decided to get a different job. Think about that. Imagine you worked at an office or you worked at a restaurant. You were a waiter at a restaurant and you left that job. Everyone else said you're a traitor. Can you believe that? Absolute cult brainwashing nonsense. There we go. Number five, they eliminate themselves and others from the possibility of a life-altering experience. That one speaks for itself. I don't even need to explain that. The nonsense speaks for itself. Number six, these people are providing no value. Say your piece. Why create a YouTube channel? They are attempting, well, why do you have a YouTube channel, Dale? Why are you making this video? They are attempting to create a tribe of those who feel like victims to profit off their ignorance with merch memberships and YouTube views. All right, Dale. <laughs> Whatever you say, Dale. 
Number one problem, encouraging people to stay in a state of feeling like they are a victim so they will watch your YouTube videos, join your community, and buy your t-shirts does more damage to others than any network marketing company has. The irony of this statement is so palpable because literally every MLM that I've ever looked at continues to preach Th this exact thing that he is describing. Maybe not necessarily keeping people in a state of feeling like a victim, but continuously keeping people in a state where they believe that they have more to improve, more mindset. This event, this next event is going to change your life. Your mindset can always be improved. It's a bottomless well of event tickets and tapes and what webinars and whatever other training and merchandise and whatever other nonsense you can hawk at your downline recruits. This is what MLMs do. This is the whole, the Amway tool scam. Uh, you know, any MLM company that tells you to buy books that, you know, Amway has a, a website where there's like Amway preferred reading materials where they'll tell you, go read this book, read this book. It's like 30 books on there. So, you know, and this is why MLM goes so hand in hand with the, new age spirituality, self-improvement, you know, industry, which is like a billion dollar plus industry, Tony Robbins and all this type of crap. None of us have the right to remove hope from others based upon false information. Yes, there are problems as I have spoke out as I have spoke out against for over 20 years, but your focus is not on fixing problems, but profiting from them, from those who don't know any better. Again, this idea of MLM done right and there's bad actors and bad apples and we need to fix the problems is a complete nonsensical argument. Give me one solid example of one thing that you could change in MLM to truly make it a reputable and respectable business. You know, more regulation is not going to do it. More disclosure is not going to do it. The entire thing is a scam. The entire thing is based on deception from start to finish. The only way to improve on multi-level marketing is to get rid of it completely. It has to die. You cannot regulate crime. How do you regulate fraud? Next, are you gonna regulate murder and theft? Complete nonsense. Complete nonsense. Oh no, and then the last bit is him playing a Jordan Peterson motivational video called How to Make Yourself Powerful in 2022. Wow. Wow. Where was I? Here we go. The pathway of the martyr provides no value in the real world. Arrogant ego and not having the ability to admit your mistakes prevents humans from ever moving forward. Well, I'm pretty sure the anti-MLM crowd does admit that being an MLM was a mistake. Why is this spilling? Misinformation and telling yourself lies helps you maintain a positive yet fragile self-image. Daily watching anti-MLM videos puts you in a tribe that will love bomb you, but emotionally prevents you from moving forward and getting your act together. Tell that to people who have had their lives significantly, sig tell that to people who have seen their lives significantly improved by watching MLM content, anti-MLM content rather. Let me say this again. Tell that to people who have had their lives significantly improved by watching anti-MLM content that helped them to unjumble the wires of their brain that had been so tampered with by their predatory uplines who brainwashed them. And they don't even understand what happened to them. And they watch videos from people like Robert Fitzpatrick and they read Ponzinomics and it helps them to understand the systematic... Uh, capture of their mind that they suffered. Attempting to make things worse for profit and lying to yourself about your motivation is not a good idea. You can't escape your track record. Learn to bear your burdens properly. Live, learn, and move on and do something productive and valuable. And myself and many other entrepreneurs will be cheering you on. Insane. Complete. This is such a Scott Johnson level of deflection and condescension that I'm actually amazed that Dale Calvert even exists and that I never heard of him for this long. I never heard of him until just yesterday. And the fact that he's been out here saying such a high level of nonsense for as long as he has, I'm actually amazed that I never heard of him, but 
hey, Dale, maybe we could have a conversation. You could come on my channel. We'll have a respectful conversation about uh, our disagreements and why I think you're completely wrong on almost everything that you said in these two videos we looked at. Wow. Wow. Thank you to another witness for the donation. What happened to... Uh, I can't answer that at this moment. I can't answer that. I'm very sorry, and I truly, uh, genuinely apologize, but I hope you can understand and uh, have patience and, and be patient with me. I can't answer that right now, but hopefully soon in the future. Bad Dog Sports, what up? Okay. What up, Tyler? Tyler Hageman, what's poppin', bro? Good to see you. Hope you're still in here. Okay, let's see. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. Susie says, they would have developed more on a personal level by investing the money in therapy. So true. They would have gotten professional advice, not from some random self-proclaimed mentor. Bars. Okay, hold on. Somebody donated? Let me check. I don't want to miss your guys' donos before you leave. Looking, okay, here we go. Looking at videos, dropped $10. Thank you so much. Looking at videos, said, hope this helps you, my friend. I always thumbs up the thing. Billions and billions of likes. Billions and billions. Thank you. Thanks, Marco. Appreciate that. Thank you, Nicole Y. Capitalizing the words not true does not make it so, so funny. Thank you, Trey Tino, for saying Marco is the realest anti-MLM YouTuber. Uh, somebody also uh, purchased the cult member shirt. Luke, thank you for purchasing the cult member shirt on alwaysmarcomerch.com. We love to see that. Let's pay them bills, baby. Who needs math anyway? I do not have a website other than my YouTube, Patreon, and merch. If you ain't lying, you ain't trying. So true. Marco, two seconds later, you're a traitor if you don't like the ting. That is actually true. Thumbs up the ting. Thumbs up the ting. Okay, I'm scrolling through your comments. What up, Bad Dog Sports? The ball's on this guy. Tell yourself lies. All Dale can do is personal insults and deflections. I mean, that's all I've seen so far. Hmm. A lot of, some of you guys ask me about different companies. I get DMs like this every day. If you have to ask whether a company is a scam, you know, do you ever have to ask if a company isn't a scam if it's not a scam? Hopefully, Losing Fortunes Radio does another episode on me soon. If you guys want to go and check their uh, catalog of new episodes and tell me if they're talking about me, I'm happy to react to them, but I don't want to keep this stream going too long. We've already been going two and a half hours. Okay. Amelia, you got your cult member shirt. I love that. Glad to hear that. Hope, hopefully you like it. Um, okay. Good stuff. Well, this was good. I hope that we can, uh, hopefully by next week, maybe Dale will have seen this video and, and will respond and we can, uh, we can have a nice chat, a nice conversation. And I recorded this stream too, so we can, uh, so we can cut this down into a video if you, if, if you like. Okay. So yes, lastly, tomorrow, if you're a member on YouTube or you're on my Patreon, new video is dropping tomorrow. Very excited for it. I think it's very funny. You guys are going to enjoy it about the presidents who have promoted multi-level marketing. And if you're not, then it will be out on Monday. Yay, Monday. We love Monday. And uh, yeah, I'm working away. We just got to get this we got to get August and September. We got to get through August and September. And I know it's a long time. I know I've been, uh, I know you guys have been asking me some questions that I haven't answered or can't answer. And uh, just, 
please be patient with me. I promise uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel. I believe that good will prevail over evil and just, you know, keep doing, keep trying to do the right thing. That's what I'm trying to do. So, yeah. All right, you guys. Appreciate it. Uh, Instagram, always Marco. That's where I post probably the most. The Discord link is in the description, and I'll put it in the chat one last time if you want to join the Discord. Um, appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you've DM'd me on Instagram and it's urgent, if it's actually urgent, I mean, I'm not urgently answering Instagram DMs, honestly, but if it's urgent, you'll send me an email. You know, people DM me and they're like, can I send you this thing that I have? And I'm like, okay, email me. And they, they have the audacity, the, the audacity to say, what is your email? Motherfucker, if you went to my Instagram page and you clicked message, that means that your eyes were literally looking at the thing that says email. It's literally right on my profile. Message, you can, I'm looking at it from my own profile, but the button is right there. It says email. So if it's really urgent, you can send me an email. Obviously, more people DM than email, so I'll, I'm more likely to see the email. But anywho, you get me. Anywho, appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you for all the support. Everyone who donated, everyone who became a member. Love to see it. Uh, thank you, guys. Appreciate you. Peace out.